just set up. I'm playing with volume slightly to see because clearly, there's clearly other stuff Move going the on desktop here. desktop audio, OBS, and leave only That's... the application audio. Okay. That's me. Okay. Also, make sure your mic and aux input isn't actually taking Discord as well because that, that happens sometimes. Okay. Uh, how's that? Is that working properly? Is it echoing still? Can somebody check for me? I have, I have, I'll keep talking just so that at least you can hear something going on through the thing. Uh, I've killed two other feeds in a vague hope to try and make this work. The big question is, are they going to hear all of us or just one of us? You see, that's the big question. Uh, Testy Trekkie, could you just, uh, echo going, going, could you just define for me, bud? We think we're getting there. Okay. Uh, I, it is, no it is no longer echoing. I hear no Australian. Yes, Improved. I, no Australian. I mean, you know. Clean audio. Hurrah! All right, I think we're there. Okay, fucking hell, man. <laughs> so I think they can only hear the technology. My absolute behated. I am going to see if I can potentially. I'm going to see if this makes my uh, audio any better. Oh, it's not even working. Oh, okay, never mind. It's not fine, dude. Okay, it seems that we fixed the issue. I sense yeah, a bug. We're all good. <laughs> okay, we, it seems we're okay. So you can turn us back up now. We're a bit low, so you can turn us back up. And I think you can turn yeah. us back up in Discord. Yeah, yeah. And we should be okay. Okay. Um, Ayo. Let's, Ayo. Ayo. Let's Ayo. the audience hear our seductive, sultry, dulcet <laughs> tones. I think, yeah, if I turn you up there, and I turn you up there, and I turn you up there, and I turn you up there, right? You're all on maximum yeah. attack now. Oh, sweet. Now yeah, we can swear at each other. You can swear at each other as much as you fucking like. Um, Let's pretend it's a Call of Duty lobby from 2009. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, well, no, because we, then we, we have to call each other a wanker anymore. and stuff, and I'm not up for that. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's worse than that. We'll get Hard Thrash's channel nude because we're going to do a 2009 COD lobby. We need all the slurs ever, and we're going to just get to say, nude. We, yeah, would, <laughs> we would need to just be able to. I mean, it wouldn't exactly be very creative or imaginative. It would just be a lot of slurs. <laughs> yeah. Do you realize how much beer from Queens, like, like Forex, I'd have to drink to bring out, like, my cod lobby slurs from back in the day? Like, it'd take a lot of alcohol. I mean, you say that, they're probably all just hanging around, man. I mean, it would only take a 30 seconds. Um, yeah, you know, it is what the... Okay, uh, we've got King Charles III, and somebody's going to bring Cromwell along shortly. I, I, Testy, I'm a bit worried that that's not a good idea. Okay, right, homies. Um, we've already done two of these things, and frankly, we've got one brilliant aircraft of the F-14, and then we've got one that isn't. Um, yeah, it's not. It, it looks <laughs> frankly <brilliant>. not. <laughs> Falcon backed me up. <laughs> I don't... Look, I don't care what anyone says. This thing is... All right. It's wonderful. I get it. I get the vibe. I get it. But you're also killing a third of the people who fly it. So like, yeah. So but what I'm saying is but the skill cap is very high. The skill cap is very high, and to use it. Yeah. And also, I, I, I am not as, as quite as well versed in the multitude of American fighter aircraft of the Cold War as I'm sure many people here are. But I still know that putting the Starfighter in Sub Zero. <laughs> like, mm, uh, it's a lawn dart. I mean, it's a, a, a jet powered lawn dart. Let's be it honest. looks awesome. I, I, I argue for it being put into NATO because, as I said before, it was one of the most widely dispersed NATO fighters of its era. So I will I think... accept it on the border. Okay, well, hang on. Let's, 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 let's... It's on the border. It's fine. There we go. Um, all right, no, fine, fine. We'll put that on the border then. So, so I think, I think, in honour of, of Yorkshire's finest, Ben Man, are you in a position to put your first one up? Uh, not quite. I'm still no. preparing, although I will be shortly. Okay, Marky, would you want to? Do you want to give it a go? Yeah. Sure. All right, hold on. I mean, I don't want to. Make okay, it hold on. I am. I am just finding it. I need to find a good PNG of it. See, One comment in your here. chat what part of Starfighter are you not getting? See, they understand it. <laughs> they get it. I, I, I get you want you like rocket ship go burr, but I just don't. <laughs> I just don't understand why one would 
even consider it. Like, I like living. Life is good. I choose life. I mean, choose life this holiday. Cool. The thing is, if it had come along 20 years beforehand and it killed a lot of Luftwaffe pilots, then it's fine. And that goes in sub zero. But it didn't. It killed a lot of post war Luftwaffe pilots. <laughs> so it's really not okay. I yeah, forget, I, you know, they I crashed all, like 256 saying, in the Luftwaffe crash, something like that. All, all I'm saying is that if the Starfighter were a Soviet plane, we'd be ripping it a fucking new one right now. We'd be uh, laughing our asses off. Yeah, so yeah. I'm saying yeah. it's a good plane. I'm just saying it looks cool. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That actually, Bin Man hit the nail on the head. We are, we are definitely being pro NATO shills for the propaganda machine. Um, oh God, are of that. we? How sad. Never mind. Move on. Yeah, but that's but that's the point. We're not we're not being objective here, boys. We're not yeah. being objective. If I start trying to be objective, please hit me over the head with something hard. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. All right, here we go. I found the PNG of it. I've got, got it. I've got it. I got it. Hold on. If it's you need me to take strip a while, it out, I've got, I've got. I can strip stuff out really uh, quick. I have. I have. Um, I have the glorious of Paint 3D. I have Paint Reloaded. <laughs> All right. Dust Paint 3D. <laughs> All right. I present to you my nomination to go in the cool section. Yes. I cool. present the Mackie C202. Oh. 205. He's Italian. No, oh. no, no. I present <laughs> this as the Italiano. The Italiano play the C202. <laughs> Oh, I, I I hate to admit that I'm a, I'm a bit of a CO2 C202 fan. It's a it's a beautiful plane. Okay, look. Oh, I, look I, at I, the boat. I hear you. I hear you. And yet, and yet, I can't help but feel that it should be about there. Uh... Okay, incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> I. What the hell were you talking about? Okay, so 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 let's hear like hear me out. Here's my reasoning. Okay, go on. Go here's, on. here's my reasoning. All right, here's my reasoning. You know, like, we, we, we're doing this in the spirit of reviving Top Gear, seeing as the BBC has actually killed it. It's the whole yeah. reason this started. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, Hear me out. Go on. Okay. You know when you get a Ferrari, like, well, none of us could own a Ferrari, but when you see a Ferrari, right? I've seen bits uh, of Bin a Man, Bin Man here can back me up. Um, It's fantastic. It's wonderful. It roars like a tiger. It's, it's, yeah, it's but red. it's more off it the whole it time you're being fast. overcharged. But yeah. And, and then... It's, it, it, it it's like you know you you you, you learn to love again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you do. You really do. Um, and then the electric short, and the bits fall off. Right. 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 right, right. I, I see. I see the Mackie as like the aviation equivalent, the World War Two aviation equivalent for Italy of the Alfa Romeo. Right. So it's it an is, Alfa, is, isn't it? It, Everyone it, it, should own one. It's as good as an aeroplane can be briefly and here's why because there's lots of it's it's a cool plane because there's lots of little bits and pieces on it mm. that were put in uh, f solving problems that no one had really thought of like for That's example true. to counter the p factor of the prop one wing is slightly longer than the other to counter the torque of the of the of the propeller so it doesn't actually have much swing on takeoff and it's in so maneuvering Italian. <laughs> Now, when it goes too slow and you go into a stall, the sn the stall is so vicious it spins on its axis. But if you don't stall, it's brilliant, right? And then you've got if the you're not fight. a fucking moron. If you're not a dumb idiot <laughs> moron, then it's a great play. Okay, and then and then you've got the gun sight. The gun sight has like these three little spaghetti dots, right? Three little spaghetti dots, and it's it it's it just does wonderful things that you never thought possible. Okay. Like, it, it's fantastic. Like, it, it adjusts for an aiming system that everyone else thought, hey, we're going to put sequential rings, like on the German Revy gun site. The Italians are like, no, 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 no. no. We put, you put a dot in the middle to aim, and then you put a dot to the right if you want to shoot to the right. You put a dot to the left if you want to shoot to the left. It's brilliant. The electrics don't work. Cannons, a <laughs> bit hit or miss. Braders, you know, do their thing. And, I mean, you know, okay, okay, okay. All right, look, I think, mm -hmm. Anamaki, I think you've made a very cogent argument for it not being in Russia's Strong. But I, I think it has to sit... I don't think realistically it can sit in NATO standard. I think it, oh, I think it has not? to sit there. Well, because they only made about four, four of these damn things that actually wound up flying. The rest of them sat there outside the factory rusting gently until eventually they wound up getting used either by the Germans or then subsequently by the Allies. So it's going to sit there. 
I, <laughs> mm, okay. I, I, I will, I will accept. You know, not being on the entirely on the left side of of the wall. I think I'll that's. I'll tell you what, I'll do. I'll what it is. I will, I, I will move it there, so it's behind the in front, just the engine. Because that's really the bit that's not going to work, if we're honest. Yeah, because the engine's the worst bit. Yeah. Don't you that's dare talk bad about the Daimler Benz 605. <laughs> the Daimler Benz 605 is a magnificent engine. I will not tolerate this slander. <laughs> oh, I forgot, yeah, of course, it uses the, uses the same... It's a German engine. engine. Oh, you're not helping yourself, I'll be honest. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I do. The later models of the 605 didn't have the spontaneously catch fire problems. No, okay, well, they but... switched back to normal bearings after the no, whole Marseille to... incident. Yeah. Okay. When you have to specify this type doesn't have the issue of spontaneously mm -hmm. catching yeah. fire, and, you've and, got an issue there. And also, yeah. it wasn't so much spontaneous combustion as seizure because it was built by slave labor, which we, you know, um, was always a bit problematic. Uh, yeah. well, I'd argue, given the economy at this stage, everyone working in Italy was slave labour, whether they had a job. Uh, they, they, they just might not have <laughs> spotted it. Yeah, was valued point. at that point it's in time. Point. <laughs> 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 they might not have spotted uh, it yet, but it was coming. Um, oh God. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, grumble, 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 uh, grumble. Yeah. All right, uh, Bin Man, do you want to have a go? Uh, okay, so my first, cool. my, my first choice, I could not find a PNG of, so I had to then quickly, the, oh shit, okay, I guess I'll quickly, I'll quickly cut one out in GIMP, and then I forgot that I didn't have GIMP installed on this laptop, <laughs> so... Do you, want to, um, do you want to send me something, and I'll do it quickly for you in the background, it'll only take a second. Uh, okay, no, that's I'm what, that's what I'm doing now, I'm I am fine. doing that now. Okay, okay. Uh, shall, shall I leave you to do that, and I'll, 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 I'll put one up? Yes, yeah, that okay. sounds like a good plan. Okay, in that case, in which case, I have to... I've taken this far too seriously, all right? So I've got a few on here that I can pick. But I'm going to start with... Well, okay. Here's a thought. So I was going to start with something quite topical, uh, which is obviously this, right? Which is the Russian landing ship. <laughs> um, which would which would normally which would normally sit over here, right? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but 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 oh. as we all know, actually, it would you know be a comfortable fit in the Russia strong bit, and it's kind of a dead fix. But as of this morning, of course, it's actually migrated its way up over here. Uh, <laughs> Oh, um, so you kind of get you get before and after, I think. <laughs> <laughs> same same thing. Oh, and strictly speaking, yeah. on that explosion. Yeah. Oh sure. my god. <laughs> uh, so this is. I mean, I'm going to get the pronunciation horribly wrong. It's something like Novacheska, I want to say. Oh god, I can't get this right. But this is for those that don't know. This is the landing ship that. Um, Ukraine blew up in harbour this morning, or yesterday morning, I should say, in the small wee hours as a Christmas present to Russia. Yet another landing ship goes up in docks, and it looks like this was an air-launched attack rather than a missile attack. So this wasn't Storm Shadow firing from miles away. This was something a lot fucking closer. What we don't know. If you want to, uh, if you want to, um, yeah. if you want to feel very good, uh, there was reports of another very large explosion in Sevastopol a couple of hours ago. Oh, was oh, there? Shit. Oh, oh, was there? I, I don't. I don't mean to be speculatory, but I have a sneaking suspicion that our friends from General Dynamics have arrived. I have a feeling they may. <laughs> they may have become involved in the situation. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, strictly speaking, it's a submarine now, which is which is which is cool. So, uh, I'm okay with it. And the, the hilarious reports this morning from Russia were uh, some damage was sustained by the ship, and then there was literally a picture of the docks and the mast sticking out of the water. Uh, I've actually, some, I've got damage. Comments, right? some damage. I've got back. To, I've got back in my comments saying that the shit could be repaired because the hull's still okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, ah, yes. Oh, Cope is on <laughs> another <laughs> level. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't worry, don't worry. The Mary Rose will will will, will make her come back any day now. I promise you that. Yeah, yeah no, no, just the water. Britain sending the detachment of HMS Victory after we mm. finally fucking fix it. <laughs> oh my god! Handle it, Thrasher. You keep flashbagging people with your nude Putin photo on your desktop. Oh, I'm I'm completely gutted about that. Uh, how how shameless to say. If anybody sees it, it's uh, it's a thing called Jimmel Fix It. Uh, sorry, Jimmel Paint It rather. And there we go. Hang on, do the thing. There we go. Cool. Uh, so Jim uh, does all kinds of. He does just does stuff in MS Paint, and he makes pictures. This picture he put out. 
uh, on about the 24th of February, last uh, just after the invasion, so a couple of days after the invasion, and uh, it's one of my favourite things in the world ever. So yeah, enjoy. Um, anyway, back to the cool wall. Um, uh, Jim will paint it by the way. I'll stick a link in the chat because he's so cool and uh, he's absolutely worth you going to go and get a t-shirt and a print from. One thing I've thought, it might be because because it's in dock, it might be uh, still a little bit too uh, a little bit too shallow for it to operate. But I was briefly having a little bit of hope that we might see yet another appearance of the Communa this war. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be it's interesting. I want to see it blow oh, up. Maybe, maybe. I, I kind of get the impression there's not a lot left. Um, no, I don't. I, I, it looks pretty burnt. Uh, who knows? You know, it, it sure as shit isn't leaving under from, its own power, that's for sure. From the, uh, from the a, image I saw, the bridge was facing the wrong way. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's not a thing right. you're looking for. The Reputia class landing ships of doom. Um, oh, there's, there's yeah, like, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's n no longer no. Yeah, I was sort of repeating the same joke from earlier. No longer a landing ship. Now it's a submarine exploration ship. I, I, I have a I have a Newly vehicle that I think everyone will agree on is NATO standard. Right. Go on then. Go on. All go right. On. Go go go. The Roy oh. Cat. Oh boy. The what now? Eh? The Roy Cat. Oh, no, oh no, that's that. where it comes from. But it's uh, cool. Those things it's are cool. got wheels. It's got big gun. Is it, it goes French? Fast. Is it French? Okay, well, I will. Yeah, I will give you credit. It doesn't. It doesn't look like something that should actually be in service. It looks like something from Halo. Yeah, yeah I know. See... Isn't that even cooler? Um, yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Oh, hello, laser pig. <laughs> oh. Feel uh, free to jump into here. Uh, <laughs> I've already, I've already told him to. He needs to get in on this. We're, we're getting, we're he's, getting sozzled. But you're right. The like, poor chap. He has I don't understand. Well, so, yeah. I mean, look. So is it, is it actually French? There, sorry. Is it French? No, no it's South African. It's, uh, this is South African. Huh. You see, again, again, yeah. like, I, I just. Uh, I don't uh, like wheeled APC gun carriages. I, I don't yeah, like them. It I, makes sense. It's built because of the bush war. Because like in the bush I wars, know. like it, they couldn't use tracked vehicles because they get yeah. stuck on the side of the road forever. So they had to I, use non-tracked vehicles. Vehicles. So it, it makes sense. It's cool. It's fast. It's awesome. Okay, I get it. I I, I get. Would I, you drag race one if you could? I mean, it's oh, yeah, hundred percent. I do. I would drag race Would I take it into combat? Though? That's the more pertinent question. I would not take that thing into combat because I'd be afraid that it uh, might actually be in crashed. combat with it. I um, mean, okay, th this is a very important question. If you're driving that in a combat, does the enemy have an armored vehicle or not? Well, well if it's bush where wars, it's from it's but, South African. Yeah, I mean, if, they, if you're in the bush wars, their their entire armor collection consists of one guy with an RPD standing in a hut. So no, not really. Um, <laughs> okay, so you're set. You see, shape. this is the thing. This gives me the same energy as the Striker AGS, right? And it's the same principle. I I, I get why everyone loves it, and yet at the same time, I... yeah. Look, I'm terribly sorry, but I'm 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 over here with it. It's cool. I, I'm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... Uh, yeah. it's, oh, that, okay, it's not that bad. bad. <laughs> okay, I, I wouldn't it's go that at least far, but... there. <laughs> where are we going? We're going to go, 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 go shortly Soviet. That's where it's going to... No, oh, okay. It's on the it's board. It's further anyway. over, because it's cool. It's got a big There's... British gun on it. I had, okay, look, again, again, the wheels. The, you, okay, you want to know what it is? What's I'll tell you what the it is. wheels? I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It, hard thrash is right. Hard thrash is right. It's South African, yes, but it looks French. Yeah, and which is that... not, not, not a happy combination, right? <laughs> no. It... Yeah, I like... say it looks... No, the, the, the turret's not weird enough to be French. No, it's not. It's a normal turret, so it can't be French. Can somebody find me... Can somebody quickly... Oh, see if I can find a picture of the MX thingy, the French... The Panhard EBR, you know what I mean? Like, you've got the... Yeah, because there's the EBR, the EBR that had the funny uh, metal wheels. They're actually quite clever. And then you have the um, AMX-10. Like, you've got, like... It, it, the Rui Cat is the same thing. It looks French. It looks cool. <laughs> uh, but, but do we... do we? But are, are we saying that any large armoured uh, sort of APC looks French simply by association? 
Again, uh, yes. I don't. Yes, we are. I mean, I mean let's be honest. Okay, uh, and the other... how fast this thing could go. Okay, can yeah, go? I understand that. I understand that. But then you've got to think about it. The other two vehicles I think of when I look at this are a French AMX10 or a Russian BTR. Yeah, it's the only two things I look at. I yeah, see when I look at that. Thing. On, this thing can go on at like 120 k's an hour, and it's got a big ass gun. I mean, I'm not oh, saying I... that's not cool. I'm, I'm uh, but it's not cool. Uh... <laughs> I just, I just, oh, I just can't. I can, I, it's, it's just not doing it. It's not doing it for me, Chief. No, it's I have just, to say, I have yeah, to say, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I am going to say that, like, <laughs> there, there. there is like, there is cool, there is cool factor to it, undeniably. But there's, there's something about it that just isn't clicking. You know, there's just um, some, something about this entire, because un, unlike the EBR, I do think the EBR is cool. But there's something about this that uh, it's just not fully there. I don't know what I don't <laughs> know what it is about it. It hasn't done it for you. I kind of like it. it. Uh, I kind of like it. You kind of like but it. Okay. I kind of. It's like cool, right? Yeah. You can, you can be wrong about things. Uh, hang on a minute. Uh, just a second. I've got it. Got All right. It. So, right. England still thinks it's good at cricket. So yeah, someone's going to be wrong. That's true. About that something. is true. England oh. still, does still think it's good at cricket because we are uh, win a World Cup then. <laughs> We've won two. <laughs> in fact, actually, we've won four World Cups, Six. technically. Uh, just not, you know, in cricket. Um, tricky. Riding that 1966 <laughs> high for so long. Hey, mate, it's mate, just still yeah, going. You can come well, back when well, you win a in. fucking I'm football World Cup, my son. <laughs> um, oh, God damn. Uh, I do have my thing now. Oh okay. God! You better thank me for. I almost, I, I almost put in all the work and then accidentally exported it as a JPEG. I would have destroyed oh, something. Two shakes before you put that up. I just want to quickly. The reason I'm objecting to this fucking thing is, is actually I've been fanning around in the background, which is never good. I'm just gonna. If these two things look the same or similar, then I'm afraid it has to go in shitely Soviet. Um, but if you think these things look different, then, well, honestly, I think you might be wrong. Uh, uh, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, god damn it. Why does it do this? Okay, ignore me. I was there's a big build up and I've missed it entirely. Ignore me entirely. Carry on. Go on, big man. Put your thing up. Uh, okay, all right. Um, now I do think I, I hope this is a slam dunk. I really do. Uh, because it is an undeniably cool vehicle. I don't think anyone can, uh, can say a word against it. Completely flawless. Shut the fuck up. Uh, Stridswagen. Oh, yeah. Sub-Zero. S-Tank? Sub-Zero. Stick it up, man. Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. Nah, okay. I see you're trying to compare it to the to the Panad, but... but eh, nah, the, 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 tur the turret The turret on the Panad is decidedly more French. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also got eight wheels, not six. There, we, oh. there it is. There it is. It's there finally is. here. Sub-Zero. 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 Sub-Zero is Sub-Zero. Like, without a that question. Was, that was one of the ones yeah, the, I had. Yeah, Sub-Zero. Yeah, I, I was, I was no uh, very, very... Very glad that uh, Laserpig was able to see the uh, the Stridswagen at the Tank Museum. Uh, when I went to uh, the Tank Museum on my 16th birthday, I took a picture <laughs> leaning against the Stridswagen because at that time they had it in the main museum. It wasn't in the storage warehouse. Uh, so, and it is just incredible. It's a fantastic vehicle. Love it to bits, and like it could yeah. move. It could do. You could do crazy shit. Like it could move its gun by. I forget what it was. I, I want to say it's. It has a hydraulically actuated. It has a hydraulically actuated. Um, actuated. Actuated. Um, freaking suspension system. Because it doesn't have a turret, it has to move its entire chassis up and down. But it's. But it's. It's not. It's worse. It's worse than. Well, I say worse. In inverted commas, it's worse than that because it's not even like. Uh, you know, a self-propelled gun like a Stug or a, or an SU, where sure you have a casemate, but the gun can still move that. No, the gun is bolted to the chassis. The gun cannot move independently. So the concept is like, what if we made the entire vehicle the turret? Let's shit to yeah, go wrong, like, really. It, it's beautiful. It's incredible. There is no other military vehicle that can adjust its um. 
you know, location, just its aim, adjust everything so minutely. Like, it has got such sensitive and precise controls. You can accurately aim the gun while turning the vehicle, and you can turn, like, half an inch. Wait, is, it's anybody, a tank. <laughs> is, is anybody still using this? So, yeah, the Swedes. Uh, no. uh, I don't think like, the Swedes are still using it, are they? I think they gave it. I think they stopped. Didn't they? Yeah, I think no, 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 they, the, the Swedes. The, the, so, but, oh god, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. So, because there were three main variants uh, that were retroactively named the A, B, and C. The C is the most famous one because that's like the best one that entered service, I guess. Mm. Um, they in the mid '90s they did run a trial with a upgraded D variant that had all sorts of things like modern thermals and laser rangefinders and shit. But uh, they decided, nah, let's just license produce the, the Leopard, and that's what they did. No, you, can't, um, you can't fault them, really, because, I mean, it is a fact. I mean, you know, it is an objectively stupid plan. They've had to engineer really I, hard I, to make I, it work, right? I don't know if this will work, but I'm just going to put this here. Go on, stick it in. Uh, but, yeah, no, other other really cool thing about the Stridsbargen oh, was that it's... Uh, Oh, hang on, it's loading. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get Stridswagen. Get Stridswagen. Yeah. yeah. I could depress my yeah, fucking gun, motherfucker. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, the, uh, also, cool thing about the Stridswagen was the first uh, tank, certainly, that used a gas turbine. Got there before the Abrams. Nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. No. Just a very, very, very cool vehicle. I'm trying. There's like. Uh, oh yeah, no. The, the, so, quick, quick story. Quick story. Uh, the British, specifically the uh, uh, army that was based in West Germany during the Cold War, was actually Boar, interested right. in acquiring in acquiring the Stridswagen. Uh, but they, because the, the Stridswagen was only ever used by Sweden in the end. But uh, the the British army ran some tests and. While ultimately they decided not to, uh, they were comparing it to the Chieftain, obviously. Uh, during the trials, the Stridswagen never dipped below 90% uh, availability. Holy shit, they were testing, really? That's incredible. Yeah, they were, they were testing uh, 10 Stridswagens against 10 Chieftains. And the Stridswagen never dipped like below ninety percent availability. Wow. Meanwhile, the Chieftain was regularly at sixty percent. Yeah, okay, but because Chieftain, the Chieftain... Chief, Chieftain won. That's that's an unfair comparison. It was built by British Leyland, and to be honest, they were doing pretty well to get the thing with tracks <laughs> attached to it. Don't, and... don't say their name. <laughs> sorry, don't sorry. Say some their of them. Name. Some of them. I didn't mean to, man. Sorry. You'll oh, some of them. Another episode, half time. You've got to be more careful than that. <laughs> oh god, that fucking multi-fuel engine. Whoever at the DOD thought that was a good or the MOD in it your case thought that was a good idea, should have been taken out and shot. Well, it, but it was. I mean, and on paper, it's one of those fucking brilliant seventies ideas where you go, "That is so cool," because we could totally need to be. Brown was a brilliantly seventies idea. But, <laughs> but, but, brown, but when you everything is brown, actually try and make it, you go, "Oh man, what have we done?" <laughs> <laughs> and it takes like a team of engineers like three hours to convert the fucking thing. Well, yeah, more than that, depending depending on which fuel you were converting to, sometimes it could take eight hours. Now look, that's a segue into I'm it. Saying Actually, there that, weren't that some makes me... Oh, I was going to say, as a segue into that, I have another great British invention on my list to add to this war. Well, I mean, look, mate, you, you, oh. you, you, you're speaking at exactly the right time, dude, because it is definitely your turn. Do you want to stick your thing on? There you go, so have fun with that. Do it. Oh no. Oh, I have. I, I'm tempering my Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The oh, oh man. The ferret. It's the ferret. It's the fucking it's beautiful. ferret. Oh, I love it. 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 It's so cute. Oh, that needs to go in bloody shittily Soviet, or at least on the edge near the fucking brewer cat. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to see. Does does Google Slides have the background remover option? Oh no, there we go. We got it. Yeah, just 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 look at it. It's so <clears throat> bad. <laughs> I don't know, man. Don't care. don't care. Don't care. I was. Uh, you you saw the picture, uh, uh, Anamaki, and I think Thrasher as well. Oh yeah, Thrasher, you definitely saw it. 
I went to the Imperial War Museum recently, and they had a UN one there. Mm, mm. It's so, oh, it's so cute. Like the tiny little toy. Yeah, yeah, the only thing that, okay. worse, the only thing worse that you could have posted would have been a Saracen. Like that is the only thing that. worse you could have put, could have posted. Somebody just pointed this out. Oh. There, this is Marcus Ott in the chat just pointed out that it's got a Jag engine in it. Um, oh no, I, I left my keys in my other trousers, my jack. I thought the I thought the ferret had a had a Daimler engine in it. Hang on. I believe it was yeah, no, it, it's, it, Go on. There, there there may have been some other variants, but the main engine because it was the ever prolific Rolls Royce B series, because that was also in the Saracen, it was also in uh, okay. the uh Saladin, it was also in the pig, uh and the Hornet. Yeah, no, it was the Rolls Royce B series was in fucking everything. Why are British armored cars so ugly? The only decent looking one was the Whoa. Stag Out. Whoa, hang on. Oh, it's a little, little hang on. What the fuck are you calling the ugly? Staladin. The Staladin <laughs> looks great. We have an update no. on the uh, on the Rapucha that just got yeeted into oblivion. The oh, nice. Air Force is saying it was a storm shadow. Oh, okay. Okay. Lovely. That's cool. what they're saying. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make an executive decision on the basis. So Digi was supposed for those that don't know, Digi Digital uh, Vagrant was supposed to be the king for the day today, but he's failed to turn up. So um, I mean, to be fair, it's like nine o'clock in the morning, which is not good for a V-Trever. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to say, look, if it, if it's got tires on it, it it, it lives over here. Um, I'm 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 <laughs> sorry. I'm, okay, just... I'm, okay, I, I will just on the basis of cuteness alone. I am I am not going to allow the uh, the ferret to be entirely in Rus in in Rus's strong. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Actually gonna, I'm, I'm actually going to put this here. The rear tires are going in. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I just I can't. I think it's Falcon's turn now. <laughs> I think it's uh, Falcon's yes. turn. Come on. Uh, you know what? This is a. a proper nato tier awesome uh forgive me i'm just using my uh spotter cards that i scanned in because i just think they're cool oh oh the phantom oh oh baby oh, oh. oh. i mean yeah I, okay i don't really okay. need to say much about it i mean you know no, wait I, wait falcon falcon, I'd put falcon, that falcon closer falcon. to sub-zero really important i put it close really yeah important put it question. like right here like yeah with or without the spray engines in it. Uh, so for those that well, don't know, the, the Brits decided that the Phantom was weedy and didn't have enough grunt. So they took the engineers out of a, uh, the engines out of a buck. They gave it a reheat function and they shoved two of them into the Phantom, which made it ridiculously overpowered. I mean, you know, as a ground attack, it was much, much, much too powerful. Um, but I mean, <laughs> more power was not I to do, like. I, I've got to stand exactly. my just, G29, just, just, just more more speed is more better more, more speed better is more plane better. More, more, speed is more better. go better more more good <laughs> more boom you yeah. see you see like vietnam cred rock and roll napalm go burr uh in thrust we trust as chat says like you know <laughs> can you make a fridge fly with enough horsepower yes yes, yes, yes you can yes you can, yes, yes, you can. and <laughs> yeah, okay. sled. I, I i you know what i think i think we're right there yeah. i think it's nearing sub-zero but mm. it's not okay. quite there. can we can we can we it's... a point has been made in the chat which i think we should address which is uh, uh mark mccollin says surely the f4 is cooler than the starfighter Mm. I can't argue yeah. with that. It fucking is. I mean, there's no, no way around. I can't argue with that. I, I, no, if, no. if that's the case, then I think we need to demote the Starfighter rather than. Yes. Rather no, like, than... We're, we're not. We're, I'm no. not demoting the F4. No. no I'm not demoting. Like, I'm not, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There right, we we're demoting the Starfighter because <laughs> we. Because I'm going to move this here. Um, like, I, I just I can't justify putting the Phantom in Sub Zero. No. When the Tomcats in Sub Zero, right? Like, right, I right, just, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Tomcats yeah. fucking amazing, and the stuff. I mean, the, the F four is. Although <sighs> I, although there is a little part of me that thinks we might, we might like if we're going by Top Gear rules, we might want to swap them. And I know that sounds like heresy. Yeah, what the fuck? Again, are you, are you, are you, it, you been drinking? It, I know. Okay, okay. I know it sounds like heresy, but you got to think in Top Gear rules. Right. If you're some if you're some thirty year old midlife crisis guy and you get your first big paycheck, 
from your executive company and you're in the plane market. Right. The gonna... Tomcat is like the Porsche 911. It's like, hey, <sighs> I've seen this in all the movies. It's on you're all the right. posters. Oh, I want to buy it. You see? There, there's my point. Yeah. It's in, it's the Top Gun plane, bro. I bought the Top Gun plane. I, I, yeah. And it's also variable geometry. So, like, you know, I like I love variable geometry. It's awesome. I'm an F-111 fan. But also, it gets, it gets engineering docked points because it's just a nightmare for everyone so yeah see chat is sort of hearing what i'm saying here like yeah you, but, like, but i hate to say okay. you are right okay wait, like, the phantom right. has like that retro raw yeah. power I, kind I, of feel. it's like what. a muscle car i'm not i'm not removing the f-14 from sub-zero because it was in <laughs> top gun which was unquestionably the coolest movie that's ever been made and Best movie ever and made. the coolest dictator that's ever been the shah of iran bought some so it needs to stay. Hell yeah! Right. Um, <laughs> yeah actually, actually, you've got a good point there too. Because the oh, you've got a that's a good point too. Because it has the most like besides the F fifteen, it's got the most successful air to air combat record in history because it just absolutely dominated the Iraqis. Okay, because there making... is a point. Because like, there is a point. Like yes, okay, you have like on on people who like don't know anything about planes like. The F, uh, in which case they get the yeah. F fourteen and the Phantom are going to kiss. Like, yeah. okay, you have you have the point where, like, you know, it's like it's like the you you ask you ask like Jimmy from down the bar like what his two favorite planes are, and he's like F fifteen B fifty one Mustang. Yes, true. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you do have that factor, but like, okay, but is it so cool? That of course he would like it, you know. Is it like which which one takes precedent here? Which factor? Um, okay, so all right, look, I'm I'm not going to try and settle. I'm not going to cut that Gordian knot because I just I just don't think he can. Uh, I think I think <laughs> we have to go with another selection, and we're going to move on. And like all good discussions on these lines, we're not going to try and actually resolve the problem. So uh, <laughs> whose go is it next? I've got completely lost. I think it's yours. Oh God! All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what you'd expect me to do, which is I'm gonna do something completely left field, right? Um, this is uh, specifically the horse-drawn cart. Uh, you know what? That's valid. That is absolutely valid. Uh, Farno, Farno finally won through. He demanded a horse, and he got a horse, and, and he got a horse. So, so, so. Um, this, I've specifically picked this out because this is probably the most enduring vehicle of warfare that's ever been so far. You know, they started out with like proper horse-drawn wagon, and this is a wagon, I should say. And in this particular case, this is a, an English ambulance team off uh, the Western Front in 1914. But these things were around for the whole of um, human history. Really. In fact, in fact, in some wars, they still use them today in terms of moving shit around. So you can't really argue that it's not ubiquitous, which it definitely is. And it's easy to move, which it is. And it only requires a few horses, which is great. Yep. But most importantly in all of this, this is actually a complete excuse to talk about uh, the Battle of Minden. So Battle of Minden, August 1759. This is the great fight where Churchill's great, 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 God knows how many times, granddad became Duke of Marlborough because he marched an army in secret into Germany and fought a battle against the French with the Germans on the other side of the border than from the one we normally fight with the French on. And he did it partly because he had ambulances with him which let him get his troops onto the back of things which could take them to a hospital fairly quickly so that they could get their legs amputated, even though he knew he couldn't get them back into the fight. And that is important because up to that point, everybody gone, right, well, if my troops get shot, fuck them, they're useless to me, who cares, let's move on and find some more. And Marlborough went, I don't care if they're useful to me, they're still men, I'm going to look after them. And so he produced the horse-drawn ambulance. Um, and he made sure he marched across to Germany with them, which was not an easy thing to do. So they are, to me, NATO standard. That's a proper NATO attitude yeah. to things. Right? I, 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 the, only I will... issue, the only issue with this is your own words say it has wheels, therefore it must be in shitty Soviet. Oh, shit, no, hang on. No, I said if it has tyres. Mm. It has wheels. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh mm. no! Right. Okay, I've, okay, but but it also but, has legs. Horse, <laughs> but horse, <laughs> but horse. And I'm, but, I, I, I like oh, horses. I have an argument here. Argument here to make. Should this not then be the standard we judge everything by? 
So should it should it actually sit? Okay, okay. Here, because if, if dead it, in the if, middle. All right, no, because I am just going to point out if it if it has if it has tires, it's in Russia strong sit- shitly Soviet. Does that mean all planes, unless they're like skid landing? Oh. No, that no, fuck no. <laughs> that doesn't count it's because their no, their wheel only if they have fixed undercarriage. If that's the case, because they can't <laughs> retract. No, no, no. Okay, I think okay, with tires, so the I want to be really clear. Carriage. Yeah, horse drawn carriage. Go on. I'm gonna just gonna make just, um, make our, our friend here a little bit smaller because I just. <laughs> You know what? I, I, can, I can deal with that. We we'll put that in the middle. That is that is the standard thing because <laughs> I like that. I like that. Cause, okay. Yeah, because like, like, yeah, horse, horse, and ambulance, two good things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only the only reason I see if I was going to argue against myself, I should go. It sits in uh, either some zero or Russia strong, depending on how you want to look at it, because of the way that the German army started basically their entire invasion of Europe with these fucking things, and that's all they basically had, and they still won. For most of 1939, 1940, 41. So, but yeah, let's leave it. How invade Russia? Bring horses. Yeah, okay, bring horses. I don't think I don't think you can blame the horse. Like, I mean, oh, the, the 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 German army did so well in 1939. You know who <laughs> to blame is the fucking <laughs> horse. Man, man, you're a millennial. You're supposed to judge people no matter what. I mean, I thought it was us that were supposed to have the nuanced view. <laughs> I don't know. Binman's actually you know, a zoomer. I'm, I'm so. a millennial, zoomer, technically. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are you really? I'm just, I'm just get, get it right. Yeah. Get it right. Oh, Binman and I are zoomers, not millennials. Oh, oh Jesus God. Christ. Okay. <laughs> okay. In which case, I'm going to start a fight. Adam Arky's <laughs> going to start a fight. Oh, you ready? God. Ready, ready. What are you going for, baby? All the way. All the way in seriously uncool. Right against the wall. Right Ooh. against the wall. It's going there. <laughs> oh, baby. Now, it's... remember, they can't see the other half of it, so you need to bring it Just you need to bring it on. No, to... not the gannet! It's the gannet cage. <laughs> it right the there. Gannet. <laughs> I'm going to heavily disagree with this one, because it looks like a shit yes. box, but it actually is kind of cool. Hang on, hang on. I'm gonna I fix hate it. the <laughs> fairy <laughs> gannet. It go. is the I ugliest aeroplane <laughs> to ever exist. Who... <laughs> Sign no. off on that. This is there are far this... uglier, uglier, uglier planes in the gannet. No, okay, there are. Okay, no, there are. That, is, that is the best side profile I could find of one, but that isn't even the early warning one. Like the one that the, oh, RA, the, radar the, on the, the Royal Naval Air Service. I just, I can't. No, the fairy gannet is a, is a crime. I have actually seen it. You know what's funny? I've, I've, I've been, been to the. So I keep going, keep going. No, no, I was just gonna say it looks like this profile of the uh, the yellow submarine kind of. It's got a bit of that going on. It's got a bit of that going on for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it needs to. It's an anti-submarine warfare aircraft. It needs to trick the submarines into thinking it's friendly. It's one of them. Uh, it's one of okay, them. It tries so to get in amongst. So the to pack. put this on screen temporarily. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on screen temporarily for the audience. Right. Look <laughs> at this. Look at this thing. <laughs> This thing is a travesty. This thing should not exist. Look at I, it. Okay. okay, okay. It is disgusting. Let me let me like, argue. I don't... Let me argue against it just for a second. So, so just leave that image on the screen. Don't move it because 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 this is important, right? Basically, the engineers there have gone. What does the design specification say? Does it say that my machine can't be absolutely gopping? No. Fine. What else has it got? Let's just tick the boxes. We go from the bottom. So you've got your search radar. You've got your uh, extra fuel tanks. You've got your double propeller because why not? That's cool. You've got your extra thick body because that lets you put three people or maybe four if you need them in it. And then you've got foldable wings. I mean, come on, it's perfectly practical. What's not to like? It's just what came out the other Everything. end. Looked like, I mean, it just looks like a smacked ass. There's just no way around it. <laughs> it I agree with it that. is that the pressure. ugliest aeroplane ever made. I like. Okay, okay. It's distressingly right, ugly. Let, let, let yeah. me put it this way. Let me put it's it this a way. Little guy, stop bullying him. It's not his fault. Uh, okay, okay. He's got the, growth the on his face. The the Toyota the the Toyota K box the Toyota K box. Is a wonderful car. It is plenty roomy inside. Economy economy is incredible. Can drive for a million years. Yep, yep. Fit six people. Brilliant. 
It is literally just a box. It is the ugliest thing in the world. I don't yep. care how practical this thing is. I don't want one. I want it away. I want it away from me. I'm going to delete that picture because it hurts my eyes to look at. <laughs> it, is, it is not just uncool. It is seriously uncool. It is, a, you know what, In the, if we're keeping the Top Gear metaphor going, it is a pink Nissan Micro Convertible. Oh, no, wow. I refuse. Gosh, gosh. I will not be seen dead yes. in one. There we go. I'm going to fix it. Yeah, I'm going to put it. Uh, that's the angle it needs to go at. There we go. Yes, uh, it is seriously <laughs> uncool. Oh, oh, only that. good plain fairy ever made. Excuse me, the swordfish. Mm, kind of uh, toss, but I okay, have, we'll um, come back to it. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, right. Is it? Is it? Is it my turn now? Yeah, it must be. Yeah. Yes, your turn. Now. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm going to go for the first U.S. ship. I think. It's going to be the first U.S. ship we're going to see in this don't, list. Don't get hit by uh, the button which says this isn't cool because you've picked a battleship. You haven't picked a battleship. It's not. It's not. It's not a battleship. Okay. Carefully. It's not a battleship. Okay. Uh, I guess technically this is an aircraft carrier. Uh, I know what he's it's picked. Not the Kuznetsov, is it? It is not the Kuznetsov. It's remember this is this is American. Okay. Uh, oh, I know let me introduce you him. to the uh, USS Akron. <laughs> Okay. okay, you know what? That's yes. awesome. Oh god, no! Oh wow! Oh wow! That is sub zero. Absolutely sub zero. Okay, you know what? I'm with you. Sub zero. Young press. Airship. 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 Yeah. Airship that carries five Curtis Sparrowhawks. <laughs> that is base. Out of curiosity, that is... can it re? Can it recover the 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 Curtises? Yes, it could. Mm-hmm. Yes, I believe it can. It had a tracking system, and they would hook onto it and get pulled up inside of the. Uh, no, no, the I, I know that's what it says on, in in theory. Did anybody actually do it without killing everybody on board? <laughs> yeah, they. they uh, upgraded uh, on the uh, I think the answer to that question. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that question, which is it didn't. <laughs> okay, I, I so, okay, look up so, what so, happened to it. Yes. So okay, that the, there were two ships in the Akron class. There was Akron and Mackin. Uh, this this one in particular is Akron. Uh, now I will go on on Wikipedia and just l- <laughs> give you a list of dates. I'll give you a list of dates here. Okay. okay. Manufactured, man, uh, commenced manufacture the thirty first of October nineteen twenty nine. Launched in on the eighth of August nineteen thirty one. Had its first flight on the twenty third of September that same year and was commissioned in late October nineteen thirty one. Okay. Plenty of testing then. Last flight, fourth <laughs> of April, nineteen thirty-three. Okay, that's Fate. that's pretty good. It's a lot better than most Fate. other airships. Fate crashed off coast of New Jersey, fourth of April, nineteen thirty-three. Yeah, <laughs> most of them did. I mean, not very often New Jersey, but most of them did crash, like the R one one and so forth. But if you're putting aeroplanes up against an airship, that's never going to end well, surely. Um, yes, uh, like so the, there were make Macon did actually make it. Oh no, no, it didn't. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I thought I, okay, I thought well, Macon, I thought Macon didn't crash. It did. The airship, <laughs> the, the airship, the airship aircraft carrier is one of the coolest ideas that has ever happened. Crimson and skies, I, baby. Yeah, dude. Like, if anyone has seen, allow me to indulge in the cringe because both me and Falcon are here. If anyone has seen a unfortunately poorly 3D animated but still very cool anime called uh, The Magnificent Kotobuki Flight Corps, it is proof, it is proof that Zeppelin aircraft carriers are the single coolest thing well, I think, I, ever no, dis- no disrespect, Animaki, but I think if you've got to uh, retreat to the worlds of Japanese anime to prove that something is cool, uh, I, th- I think the real a- world Area 88 might have exists. a problem. Ghost in the yeah, shell. Uh, I, 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 I'm also going to <laughs> retreat to movies, but I am just going to point out that uh, in a, in a different movie, uh, a I, different uh, air, yeah. airborne aircraft carrier uh, yeah. was uh, was uh, successfully sieged by a house floating with balloons. So true, true. true. Uh, that true. was also a cartoon. Exactly. Um, yes, but look, I, I, I am just going to you know to, 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 all, like, to that point. I mean, I think it, I think it should live over here. Because it's a bit Keith Robinson, but it's an airship. So I'm going to put it over here okay. on the basis yes. that actually, yeah, it, 
it's such a cool idea. What's not to like? It's lethal to everybody that flew on it. But okay, fine. And it's important it was in the it... third. Oh, sorry, I was going to say it was in the third Indiana Jones movie. True, it not was. that one specifically, but yeah, there yeah. was a Zeppelin with a plane on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then like, you got to fly against the weird not Messerschmitt things, which I was really confused about. Yeah. You, you get to. F- <laughs> Yeah, but with Zeppelin airships, guys, you get to play Wing Commander in real life. Like, come on. And, and you get to say the phrase of Zeppelin airships. I mean, fuck me, that's cool, right? Yeah, so, yeah uh... that's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's just, just, just that phrase does immediately command <laughs> such schoolboy levels of holy yeah. shit. Um, it's like that, you know. I've got to go like, get some more barrel like the... back in the day. It's like that scene, you know, like in the uh, Nazis in space movie, Iron Sky, when all the like Nazi <laughs> UFOs like fly out of their space zeppelins and like attack. <laughs> like it's so unfathomably yeah, awesome. I, I do, I do just want to point out that like when you're <laughs> arguing for something to being for being cool, starting with a sentence, it's like that Nazi space movie is. <laughs> 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 Okay, okay, so this but, is... Iron, but again, but again, it makes sense because Iron Sky is the peak of B movie cheese done intentionally. It's like the greatest thing ever. For anybody interested, there's a game series called Crimson Skies. It was originally a PC game and a miniatures game, everything. The idea is that it's an alternate reality um uh is that the one with like US? a jet like the jet powered Fokker triplane no. or whatever it was. No, this is um, Sky Pirates flying in, like, Zeppelin aircraft carriers. Oh, that's right. I, oh, that I was... have... I, 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 I am also that. on a... I am also on, like, a little bit of a similar binge of just, like, cool old aircraft stuff, because I recently watched Porco Rosso for the first time. Very good movie. Oh, Porco Rosso is fantastic. Wow. Crimson Skies is on Abandonware. You can get it for free. While we're on the, uh, the cool thing, oh. I would like to I would like to submit something that I've been working on for Sub Zero. Uh-huh. No, no. Uh, the Ukrainian Su twenty seven. <laughs> oh yeah, Look that is Sub Zero. Ski. That that is Sub Zero. Yeah, like yeah. that is straight up. Oh. Like, like you see, the thing is, normally I would say the. I know we've got the shittily Soviet and Russia strong section, but the both the 1980s Soviet designs, the the fulcrum and the flanker, have to go about here. I think just because of how cool look at they the look. Colors on it alone. That puts yeah. that in the NATO standard. Yeah, that's pretty. But it goes hard. I think it goes about here. Just the the nose is just edging into Sub Zero, just because of how the flanker is one of the coolest looking aircraft ever made. I it it just it just looks awesome. the The flanker is just amazing, and the MiG twenty nine is the same. It's just like this sort of. Well, there's a reason they call the the signature maneuver of the flanker the Cobra. Right. It kind of looks so like a Cobra. It. It's like, yeah, uh, like we the, are. We are introducing the Ukrainian Su-27 to the wall. Say, that's Ukrainian colours, right? So we're okay yes. with this. Okay, fine. Yeah, we're okay with this. That's my argument. It, it looks and, amazing. And begrudgingly, begr- and begrudgingly, just the the eighties Soviet fighters when they finally, they finally built something good. Just look at it. Ah, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's a sexy thing. It looks beautiful. Does it work? Yes. yes. Which makes it Some unique. It's so <laughs> Especially not they're putting American weapons on it. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Hang on, there's, they Kazakh, um, there's Kazakh ones too that have like blue and green like wave camo patterns. They look amazing. <laughs> I bet. Like just, it, it, just the idea of them putting American weapons on it. I'm just imagining like the, the uh, sort of weapon systems of the... Uh, of the SU-27 screaming at Russian while the American weapon system is talking back in like a Texan accent. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, brother. Shoot. 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 I don't know what I don't know what that means, but I'm just gonna fire my arm anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah, boy. 
Really? Come on, are you sure you ain't Soviet? Like Stevo voice. Yeah, no, no. It's like that the aim the aim nine missile speaks like Stevo. <laughs> the missile knows where it, the missile knows where it is, motherfucker. Um, you know, like, seriously Jaden, though, so I I have a it uh, it's people are gonna forget about it by the time it drops anyway. But I have this thing. I have I've already planned the joke for the end of uh, Soviet Aviation Part 2 where I talk about jets. And it's literally, when it gets to the MiG-29 and the SU-27, it's literally, after all this time, we've worked so long, we finally built something that works! <laughs> With this, we can finally conquer the wet! And then in the middle of the sentence, it slam cuts the Soviet flag being dropped and the Russian flag uh, being raised. And it's like, I love my, my donkey, I, my beautiful donkey. I, I do. That, that is always, that's always a good gag. I did it in my video on Gaz. It's all. It always fucking hits. It's always a good gag. It never gets old. It's just the bit where it's like we've built these two aircraft that are absolute world beaters. Bang! Our money disappears. Fuck! <laughs> and then okay. they build the MiG one four one, which is just like we're gonna put plasma stealth on it. It's gonna have cannons that shoot into space. It's gonna be amazing. It flies once and it's then never seen again. Yeah, I can't make that joke for the Navy because they never actually built anything fucking good. Uh, submarines, no. Navy, like th some of the subs are pretty cool, right? Like, um, pretty cool. for about a year. Yeah, yeah. Until, yeah. They, until their reactor goes critical and, oh, and kills God, the crew. Look, if, if you want about, shake if them you want to death, you just get a decent tan off it, and it's fine. Um, okay, so the tan is from the inside out, but but whatever, you get a tan, and you get to sail on a quite cool looking ship, and you get to go to places that no one else is going to go, like Cuba. Very nice. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, so moving swiftly along, whose go is it next? Um, so it was history. I think, go. I think it's been yes, I think it's history. Oh, no, because I I just did the Akron. It you is, Akron. I believe. History yeah, I believe it is. Flanker. Yeah, and I was after history. So I believe so. it. I, be I believe that makes it Falcons. Falcons. Falcons go. Okay. Um. So this is for the entire family of this aircraft. And that's going right on the line. The MiG-23, MiG-27 family. Oh. oh. Imagine, <laughs> imagine designing an engine that is, that is made by design to not just be overhauled every 150 hours, but Ooh. completely replaced. Sorry, is that the MiG-27? To... Yes. The MiG-23, 27. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay, cool. Hang on, you carry on. I'm just going to do a thing with your, with your card. Carry on. Okay. Um, so, yes, um, this was by design. They intentionally made the engines, like, like self-destruct after 150 hours. So they would have to buy more from the Soviet Union if they were sold to um, satellite countries. Um, the 30mm cannon was not would shake the plane apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It couldn't actually yeah. shoot it because it would just fall apart. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and... I don't know. It well, it it just was not very good. It was it was oh, yeah. it was completely shit. I mean, let's be let's yeah. be honest. It was it was beyond not very good because not just with that cannon pull it apart, but also you, the little tiny. And in fact, let's make it bigger so we can all see it, right? Yeah. So if if we if we just go, we're going to try and look at the cockpit. Tell me when you can see the pilot. And bearing in mind, I've just blown this picture up about forty five times. Uh, oh yeah, you, you definitely want to have no visibility. That, that pilot your ground attack plane. cannot see anything in front of him in this area in in front of him. Right, he just can't. Uh, he can look out the sides. So his great big cannon on the bottom of it can't see the target. So what they thought was they'd just clip the nose off, which is why it's got the fucked up stupid nose rather than the original one, which is actually quite pretty, um, so that he could sort of vaguely see where he was shooting. But it didn't help. Um, and, and of course, it that that means that they had to make a separate ground attack variant because yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they had to remove the radar. And this is the thing: as as a uh, paper skies made a half an hour long video on it, which paper you should definitely is go amazing. watch. Watch I that love video. paper skies. Paper you, skies you, is fantastic. Like, you, Ukrainian YouTuber, absolutely incredible stuff. He points out that every time you fire the gun, it literally shakes the aircraft to pieces. It breaks the plane. Um, so much so they actually had to enforce limits on how many rounds an airframe could fire. Yep. Um, and then, you're right, the engine overhaul. My favorite story about the MiG-23 is the fact that when the East German Air Force got their MiG-23s, uh, the, the, the East Germans had 
well, because they were descendants of the Luftwaffe, even though they strenuously denied it all this time, uh, mm-hmm. when they when they got in, they still had that very clear doctrine of, you know, the ex Spouten. We're going to go in there and fight NATO in, like, hardcore 1v1 Top Gun duels. We're going to, you know, do proper dogfighting stuff. You know what I mean? That's that's the German doctrine. We're going to go in there and be awesome. Uh, oh. When they got the MiG-23, they had to change their entire doctrine because the MiG-23 couldn't turn. No, it can't turn for shit. Um, if if I, you I, did I, turn. I've, I've, I've slightly taken a thing. So, so Falcon, you, you, you may or may not agree with me here, but I've taken the MiG-23 there and i put it at the back because it's definitely Russia's thronk. And the Indian MiG-27, which they uprated and managed to get the gun to work on by reducing the rate of fire... I've put in shitely Soviet because that's where it probably lives. Uh, the Indian one that's kind fine. of that's worked. Fine. So okay, there's another and I thing like I want to make twenty three because it's fast. <laughs> that, that's so what it yeah, does. So okay. If you like, if you like the twenty three because it's fast, then just like the twenty five instead. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> It, the thing about the MiG-23, just like its whole idea in general, was to replace the MiG-21, be this cheap, rugged plane that was easy to maintain. Yeah, and they decided to give it variable geometry, which is, as we know, the easiest thing to maintain easy, in the world. Easy peasy, right? Ask any yeah. bark owner. No one has ever had any issues with None variable whatsoever. geometry. Uh, 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 for the Australians okay. in the audience, has your grand crew, are they okay? Or are they... Uh, <laughs> no, they've got cancer, but that's fine. <laughs> The fuel I, tanks and the hydraulic system leaks, and it, and it, it gives all our guys cancer, but that's okay. Yeah, I was fine, though, really. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, look, looks, like, looks worriedly to camera, holding a big jug that says hydraulic fluid. I have been <laughs> chugging this entire time. <laughs> so there's quite a funny thing. If you, um, I don't know if anybody's come across it. There's a, there's a blog called hushkit.net, which is like an old-fashioned blog. It's written by... a an aviation enthusiast and he goes out and interviews people and one of the interviews he did was with um the red squadron so those were the guys that flew out of area 51 they did um uh, abnormal opponent type testing against the usaf oh sorry usaf um to show them what it was like to fly against various soviet bits of weaponry and so there was a guy who was a regular mig-27 pilot or actually mig-23 pilot and uh, he's interviewed about what it's like to try and fly against the Falcon. He says, what do you do in first contact against a Falcon? He said, the first thing I do is I put my plane into the slowest turn I can put it into, and I call for help. And then as the Falcon comes close to me, I try and put my nose vaguely in his direction, and I call for help. And if that doesn't work, then I eject. <laughs> <laughs> That makes yeah, sense. The, the only the only time they... Basically, the Soviets had to do a complete rework uh, a complete rework of the MiG-23 until they got, I think, to the MLD Block 22. Well, to use a weird version of that. Like, it's the MiG-23 MLD 22, I think it is, um, where basically they had to completely overhaul the entire aircraft, uh, add in a new wing sweep position, new avionics package, yeah, yeah. the whole nine yards, and try and get it. And they did all that so it could kind of turn with so, a phantom. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then <laughs> they had to were put... still very prone to like stress fractures, and pilots were like relegated to five Gs and less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it was so it would go into a, a spin, an uncontrollable spin, so often oh, yeah. that inside the cockpit. Um, and there's a great interview with one of the guys that that did this Red Squadron thing, actually from one of the U.S. museums. One of the red hats. And he's talking about there's a white flash on the dashboard, like on the right hand side, by basically where the pilot's right knee would be. And that's where you stuck the stick and held it there during the course of one of these uncontrollable spins. Because if you held it there for 30 seconds, so bearing in mind you're pushing it forward, so nose down and over to the right, and you're giving it as much left rudder as you can, that would probably recover it. If you held it there for 20 seconds and it didn't recover, you ejected. And you're like, you've had to put a marker on the dashboard because it happens that often. <laughs> yeah, okay, and this is the thing, that. right? I guess I guess all of us uh, virtual aviators are super excited that both the MiG twenty three and the F one hundred four are coming to DCS. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't do landings. We do speed, and then we speed baby. check because our plane breaks. <laughs> okay. Not. Oh gosh! Right. So, so okay. Cool. I, I like that. Uh, I think we're going to leave those in. Shitely Soviet and Russia strong. Uh, yeah, that's and we're, we're good, right? Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, who's next? Um, I think you are. I think if we're, we're back to the beginning now. Okay. 
Uh, well, I, I think it's either Anamarchy or you. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to jump in because I've got one here which I'm 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 excited to talk about, and um, I'm not sure which picture of this I should use because one of them makes it looks quite cool, and it's not. Um, I'm gonna get mine ready then because I'm gonna have to get. <laughs> I'm going to have to do some creative finagling with my... Uh, it is, of PNG course, at... the, the Bolton Pole Defiant. Um, now Stop doing it. Absolutely <laughs> based. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's that, that thing is based. It is absolutely based. standard. <laughs> now, obviously... <laughs> NATO, NATO standard at minimum. <laughs> I mean, oh, so... Oh, God. <laughs> for those that are not familiar with this, with this <laughs> thing, uh, it, oh, it, it has a French electrical turret on the back, which frankly should be enough to relegate it immediately into uh, Russia Strong. Um, it managed to get some kills over Dunkirk, um, which was quite impressive. But the only reason he got the kills is because the uh, 109s that were coming in from behind it just assumed that what they were attacking was Hurricanes. And as soon as they figured out that it wasn't Hurricanes, after the first three of them were killed, they just annihilated them. Um, it was supposed to be a bomber destroyer, so it was supposed to be able to catch up with the bomber stream and shoot them down. But it turned out that it was about 100 miles an hour slower than the slowest German bomber. And in, bearing in mind that included the Heinkel 111, that is an impressively slow speed. Uh, it was the same body shape as a Hawker Hurricane with the same engine in it. But because of the giant French electric turret on the back of it, it weighed about three quarters more so it went very slowly it couldn't climb it couldn't maneuver it couldn't turn and crucially it couldn't actually shoot anything in front because i'll just blow this up a little bit the uh, the turret here you may notice there's a problem it actually can't get past the pilot's cockpit um so it, no, there it is cannot. no way for it to shoot in front so if the pilot gets into a traditional turning battle he's going to die and so is his co-pilot but or gunner but but, but you just can't shoot the thing in front of you. There is, I don't know if you can see it, on the, on the wing closest to us in that picture, there is a little sticky outy thing. That is the .303 forward machine gun, because there is one. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, so there, that... was, there was a setting where you could crank the turret around and lock it forward. However, it was up at like 10 degrees, and the pilot mm. had no gun sight. Yeah, so what you had to what do is you, you had to I'll, flick I'll it over this. the top and then lock it down, and you couldn't do it in flight. So sub zero, right? Uh, uh, yeah, 100%, 100%. Okay. 100%. I, I am going to I am going to jump in here quickly. Uh huh. I am going to quickly jump in here. Right. So I think I'm. I think I may have talked about this a little bit uh, before. Not on this stream. I mean, like time wise before. Uh, my great uncle uh, was an ace in World War Two. Right. Uh, one of the highest scoring in the UK. In fact, I think um, uh, if I remember off the top of my head, he got he has twenty two confirmed victories. Okay. Wow. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm just just by doing another quick Google now. Um, in between my last recalling of this and now, he has had a Wikipedia page written about him. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Um, and weirdly enough. He predominantly got most of his victories, or at least a decent chunk of them, in a Defiant. Night That's fighting, cool. right? He must have been electronic warfaring, surely. No, he was a pilot. Okay, yeah, but there, there must have been an electronic warfare thing, because there's no way those da I mean, those damn things didn't have 22 victories or anywhere close. I mean, as a totality, I think they got, like, four, including the yeah, night no, fighters. Yeah, he, he flew... He flew, he flew um, Spitfires and Hurricanes, and then was put in Defiance after that. Uh, I think possibly but, you might have that the wrong way around. Maybe. The, I, maybe. Well, here's Either the way. thing. Here's the thing. I object to the Defiant being in Russia strong. I object. That, I, like, okay, I get it. I get it. But the turret fighter concept was kind of cool, and the fact that it is the first ever electronic warfare aircraft ever. Like, eh, come on. Like, it can't just be down there. Like, I mean, the later it, versions were pretty cool. I mean, they, no, they ended up getting like, No, no, I'm not kills. having any of this. No, don't start going the later <laughs> yeah, well, versions so were cool or they figured cool out how to well. use them or any of this <laughs> shit. It's the worst idea. The only plane which is worse than this in the whole history of aviation, including the ones which never flew, is the Rock, which is slightly worse because it was <laughs> it was made by Blackburn and they took this... 
They took this idea and they made it worse by making it carrier capable. That's the only thing that's worse than this. I, okay, I am. I'm just going to point out. I actually got it the right way round. During the Battle of Britain, he flew Spitfires and Hurricanes, and then he was put on night fighting duties after that in a, in a Defiant. Okay, okay. So I got it the right way round. Uh, I'm 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 going to put it here. I I I understand it is god awful and terrible in every single respect. It's okay. Just, okay. I'll, I'll throw uh, one. I'll throw terrible, one. Throw terrible, one more terrible thing. plane. But. But my own personal connection to it, I can't put it entirely in Russia strong. Okay, hang on. Before we before we make a decision, let me just grab this. Hang on a second. Let me just do the thing here. If you don't agree with me that the whole oh, shit, what's going on there? The whole thing is wrong. Uh. Oh man. Right, the whole thing is wrong because look at the bottom of this plane. All right, what the fuck? was the designer thinking. I've got an air intake for my Merlin. All right, understandable. I've got to have another fucking great big scoop on the back here for God alone knows what. And then I've got to have this dangly thing and who the hell knows what that does. If no Your other reason... Heard you like air intakes. Like the bottom okay, so line, the... the fuck are you playing at, lads? I, my okay. best guess would be that the second intake is maybe for cooling the electronics for the turret. Yeah, it's yeah the, that's exactly what it's, it is. Okay, so it's, it's actually much simpler than that. Um, the um, the front radiator is the oil cooler, and the uh, massive massive radiator back is the water cooler. Um, and uh, yes, it it would have to cool the it would also have to cool the electrics. Um, so, so yes, the pig is telling I, me I, that I'm not correct. That apparently this took out a bunch of Stukas in 1942. Look, I'm I am prepared to be proved wrong as always in these things. Yes, uh, my I'm reading my uh, great uncle's Wikipedia page because I again a lot of this information is new to me because there wasn't a Wikipedia page like two months ago. Um, yeah, no, he did down some stuff in a in a defiant. It's not saying specifically, maybe a Ju eighty eight or something. I know there was uh, there was yes. a Ju eighty eight that was incredibly unlucky and did get shot down by one of these things, but not at night. When they put when they put the later model okay. Merlin in it, when they put the later model Merlin in it, and it had enough grunt, this thing was perfectly but, fine. I I, it, okay, I, so I will defend the Defiant. I I okay. I I mistake. It wasn't a Ju eighty eight. It was a Heinkel HE one eleven. Okay. 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 All right, so I'm going to jump in here okay, to diffuse the absolute war for tension. <laughs> this is my wild card submission for Sub Zero. You ready? Go, uh -huh. on. go on, go on. Here we go. There Ooh, we go. Oh, hello. The B58. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. The Sub Zero. I mean, Sub Zero. Sub, sub, sub fucking zero. zero. Absolutely. Any day Absolutely. of all day long. All day long. Any it's day. Like, such a cool No idea. contest. Um, let's it's, it's, it's hustling. It's on that grind set. It's getting the bitches, etc. Et yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you've got to be honest. Oh. Anytime you go, let's just take a Delta Wind aircraft and what if we just kept stucking engines on it until it goes fast enough? I mean, <laughs> that's basically the concept. Uh, yeah. It's fucking awesome. Oh. It's a complete death trap, but it's cool. so good. It's a great death trap, though. And the poor dude, because you've got the cockpit at the front there, but you've also got some poor fucker electronics officer in the back there who basically mm. had to sit in a tiny dark box for like 14 mm. hours at a time. So, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, but so your death trap odds. <laughs> so your death trap gets sub zero. My death trap gets stuck in NATO standard. <laughs> Yes, because the B-58 Hustler is <laughs> ten times cooler than the F-104. For a simple yeah. reason. Like, it, to be, to be fair, is, almost everything on this chart is ten times cooler than the 104. But, um, <laughs> uh, like, it's a I Mac like, 2 just, nuclear bomber in 1960 with escape pods. What do you want? You know, <laughs> Wait, the works, but, yeah. Hustler is... is I, 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 the hustler is like it, it's a testament to like the indomitable human spirit, you know. It's just go fast, do not stop, continue, advance. That's right. Yeah, that's the fun fact about this thing. They tested the escape pod with a bear. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. They put a bear in it. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it has that it's stuff, the... like cool retro like Adam Punk look to it. it. Like, there's no other plane that looks like it. And it got yeah, cut and as part of a Cold War deal to get rid of bombers that they that they wanted. They needed to do some like you know, horse trading, and they gave away 
the Hustler, even though it was probably the better bomber that really for what they wanted it for than the B-52. Uh, and so we still have the B-52, which was nearly given away. Yeah, but the Hustler also had a 25% <laughs> loss rate. <laughs> Oh, you know, there's, it's, if you go to the, that's pretty good if you go to the air force museum in dayton ohio they have a b-58 there and if you look under the belly of it it has some um, bomb racks for conventional stores to be hung on it because they were trialing conventional stores with a b-58 for vietnam that never oh, nice. materialized yeah, 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 yeah. But, i forgot about that oh that would have been so cool <laughs> oh i know like these <laughs> camo b-58s God, the B fifty eight Hustler is just such an epic airplane. Like this, like yes, you will almost certainly die if you fly in it. But you have an escape pod, and yes, they used it to the the test animal they used was a bear, and that bear That's has the ridiculous. distinction. That bear has the distinction of being the first living thing to carry out a supersonic ejection. By the way. <laughs> And you can sit there and go, Lance, uh, we've got to, we've got okay. to try and work out and see how this ejection system works. Uh, does anybody want to volunteer? No? Okay, no hands. What do you think we should use instead? And somebody went, a bear. That's not a goldfish <laughs> or a, a goat, but has anybody got a bear lying around they don't like? <laughs> to be fair, this is, this is America we're talking about. You don't exactly have to go that far to find a bear. <laughs> that's very true. True um, history. Given yeah. the, I've, I've had a few close the... encounters. <laughs> Have you really? Oh yeah, yeah. One night there was a, a bear going through our garbage in the middle. Then I, I came around the corner, not two meters away from me was a bear, like just staring at me. And I just slowly backed around the corner, and uh, my dad took care of it. Yeah, uh... <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go in the yeah. house at that point, or the car, <laughs> or anywhere else. <laughs> I just, just I just love away. the I just love the idea that there's like yes, if we move this angle of attack just slightly wrong, our entire plane stalls and we crash and die. <laughs> but we're also going Mark II oh, yeah. carrying five nuclear weapons on the deck into Russia at breakneck speed. Um, Incredible. The coolest thing about it is the pilot's escape pod. Um in case of emergency on the final bomb run, the pilot's escape pod actually has control linkages for the stick. So he can prep his escape pod over himself while he's flying the bomb run. And so he can fly the aircraft while in his escape pod. And he can see out the little the little ga the little window in the it's front. Nice. You can see he where can he's fly going. The plane. That's good. Yeah. Cool. He can fly the plane in his escape pod. And when they get hit by the by the shockwave of nuclear explosion they've just caused, um, they can all eject and then walk through the fallout. Because uh, Cold War, um, that's the funny thing about Cold War bomber missions. Oh yeah, They're is nuts. that every single one of them knew that if they actually carried out their mission, there wouldn't actually be a base to land at. So, so they were like, okay. So, so, so allegedly, what? during the course of, of uh, Vulcan training for pilots and for crews, and I actually, to be fair, I heard this years and years ago in a documentary talking to one of the crew members, and then I've never heard it since. And I've talked to actual Vulcan crew, and they've sort of gone quiet. So they might be humoring me, they might be going and talking shit, I don't know. But allegedly, what they were supposed to be issued with was an eye patch, each of them. And the theory was that as you were flying across your mission into darkest Russia, you would obviously see quite a lot of nuclear flashes. And if you didn't look down at the right moment, clearly it would blind you. So then you'd put the eye patch onto your blind eye, and then as a pilot, you'd fly the other bit. When, of course, it then blinded the pilot, as it would never be do on the second one, the next crew member would step up and so forth. Uh, so that, well, cause all you gotta do really is fly at straight and level, because if you're taking evasive action, you're dead. Um, and and so basically they had 10 pairs of eyes, or sort of 10, 10 eyes to, to fly the mission with. The getting home bit was never covered in the briefing. Uh, so yeah, mm. so, so eye patches and flashes. It's, uh, it's, it's an ideal way to fight a war, I think. Yeah, that's it's why the uh, yes. I would I would assume British. the Vulcan like the B fifty two would have like a uh, flash screens and they would fly on instruments. Yeah, you're right. You would assume it. that, but they didn't. That no, like not even. Didn't. I was going to no. say Jesus. that is a very British Wallace and Gromit way to deal with a war. In a just like instead um, of darkening uh, the screen. So good I, it's, about, do good. it's about two thirty so in the morning, and I'm very tired. So I'm going to okay. leave you with one. All right. uh, go on, go on, go on. One more. 
Go on. And then I'm going to love using the views. I give you, and it has just entered proper production, so it's no longer a prototype anymore. Uh -huh. The, the ghost bat. What the fuck is uh, that thing? Uh, uh, you see, what I love that? it. My, my, my Aussie pride wants to be like, <laughs> yes, this is incredible. But just because of the name, I'm putting it in the <laughs> It's no, no, okay. so, so dumb. It force, it's a force multiplier. Right, R right. That right, is right. a drone that can be controlled. You can have like six of them swarming and controlled f as a loyal wingman loyal from wingman, your F right, thirty five. Okay. It's an Indigenous Australian design. Uh, you want to be careful with words like Indigenous and Australian design, but yes, I follow you. Um, so, mm, yes. But they called it the Ghost Bat, which means something very special in Australia. Right. A Ghost Bat is when one is in the office and one has to quench Percy. Oh, and right. while quenching Percy, they realise that Percy could use a bit of a massage. <laughs> massage, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh. So one would sneak oh. out the bathroom oh. stall, <laughs> massage out the Percy, <laughs> and by doing so, they would engage in a quote-unquote ghost, ghost bat. bat. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> No, it's a really cool delightfully <laughs> Australian euphemism. I'm, I'm putting sorry. it right there. So um, it's, just, it's called um, the crack one off in English. It's called uh, hard prank. <laughs> sure, yeah, uh, yeah. It's hard it's cool. prank. <laughs> uh, the danger wank. Uh, okay, uh, I think the danger wank goes. Um, goes. Yeah, I think it has to. Yeah. On that line. Like, I, on that line. I, I'm just. I. I just. You know what? I'm gonna. Edge it over into uncool, quite literally edge it over into uncool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like penises. Because it's just... I... Somebody in chat like, says, why is it not you... called the drop bear? I think that's fair. <laughs> Okay, but like even if you even if you take the the uh, ghost bat meme into equation, like just the name, like you've got the reaper, the yeah. predator, and then the Pred ghost bat. Predator. Why <laughs> the choked chicken? Um... <laughs> it's, it, it is it is doubly it, it the name is doubly uncool because it's like it the name itself on a surface level is just incredibly edgy. You know, yeah, see what you did there. it's empty two thousand. I, I designed a plane. It's so cool. It's called the <laughs> Ghost Bat. It's, the, 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 it's so stealthy. <laughs> so it's ghosty. You know, it's like so. It's I'm just like really, actually, just like stuck to near the near the. Uh, it's just the, the name is very try hard, edgy, cool. And then on top of that, it is also a euphemism for uh, oh, um, doing for the, the deed um, thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, you, you've just described our current chief of defense boss. <laughs> no, the, you see, this is the thing. Like, oh. I had the same. I had the same reaction when they named the uh, latest model of the C one thirty Spectre, the AC one thirty, the uh. Ghost Rider. I'm like, it's the same thing. I'm just like, why? Well, well hang on. They called. Did it call so, it the AC one thirty Ghost Rider or the AC one thirty the Ghost Rider? Is there like an additional the in there? So some of those uh, 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 so Shemantillo in the uh, in the in the chats come up with the Edge Lord. I think that's what it should be called. Yeah. I, I think that's a good name for it. <laughs> the Edge Lord. The Edge Lord. Yeah, yeah. The Evanescence uh, Lister. <laughs> like in more ways than one. Like it shouldn't be called the Ghost Bat. It should be called something else. It, like yeah, the, the, the Evanescence Listener getting woken up inside in more ways than one. <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> Like you've got the They're predator, so you've got the reaper. <laughs> oh fuck off! Uh, this, I, I, I trust everybody's uh, in in their lives at some point watched with Nell and I. Maybe they, oh god, I hope I'm I'm reaching no? out here. I'm, I'm, no. Oh god. All oh, right. Okay. Well, because this joke isn't going to work at all, so we'll move on. But go and watch with Nell and I. Come back. and We'll talk about it later. Right. Um, okay. I will go is to it? Bed. So it's been a pleasure. It, it's. Yes. Have a good one. Uh, I believe that is. Anamarchy's turn, I believe. Right, let's do it. Oh God. Okay, so I've got my original three. So let's. let's I mean, if you need, if you need some time, I've got one that I can put up straight away. So. Okay, you put one up, hard well, thrasher. You, you, you have a reach up. around and see what you can. Sorry, I, I've got back into the. Uh, I go <laughs> back. Well, uh, sorry. Uh, just, um, sorry, no, so I've just got the mind on, on other things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. can't put we can't put the defiant in sub zero. I I, I can't I can't in good conscience put it there. No, you absolutely can't. You leave it where the fuck it is. Uh, right, uh, hang on. Uh, where are we? So, I have... 
sorry the chat's going wake me up inside i honestly can't comment so um <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to go for quite possibly the coolest aircraft that's ever existed i mean it might genuinely be the aircraft that won the second world war um like so obviously the b-17 was shit the lancaster had some problems with it but it was kind of okay for the job that it had to do b-29 was the most technically advanced but actually if you're thinking about heavy bombers and you're thinking about the bomber that probably did more than any other heavy bomber to win the war it's quite obviously this one um and that is the oh HE-177A, right? I, I, uh, I, knew, oh, I knew you were oh. either, either going to be serious. You were either going to be serious and say something like a bomber that did most win the war. I don't know, maybe like the... Like the, the B-24 Liberator. Something. The B-24 Liberator is the correct yeah, answer yeah. to that one. Uh, yeah. No, well, you're one... going to bring in the ever-lambasted... <laughs> you know what? We're only, gonna, we're only going to have the tail visible because it is so shit. It is off the, it no, is no, no. Off the wait, chart. Wait, before you like, get that... Like, I right, hear me, don't now, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> two two things. First of all, this one is in RAF colouring, right? I will point out. And we're going to pop it, it back. makes it pocket worse. Back, pocket back where it lives. That makes it worse. This is being flown by Winkle Brown, right? So that makes it basically immediately. Winkle awesome. Brown said in his memoir that it is the worst aeroplane. He yeah, yeah, used yeah. the only German aeroplane he aided. The problem flying. is the it way that you're judging worse. this is you're judging it by how good an aircraft it was and not how it helped win the war. And the way that it helped win the war was by killing about half of Germany's test pilots, most of their workforce, and pretty much everybody that ever operated it because it was diabolically awful as an aircraft and therefore served the Allies' purposes perfectly. Okay. I think it needs okay, to live in Sub-Zero. I, I, okay, I get your logic. I get your logic. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> But I am in physical pain <laughs> just seeing it anywhere near that. No, it goes over here. It goes I, off the chart. It is I in cannot, the bin. It is I, I cannot comprehend the 177 in like, okay, so they wanted a bomber that was like fast and could fly high. And to do that, you need power, right? We all know this. Big power equals on, bigger, bigger, more better, bigger, more better, power, 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 right? Right. But, so, they have a powerful engine. They have the 605. Great, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's good It's engine. not powerful enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, that's what we did with the Lancaster, really, isn't it? We took, yeah. the, we took the Merlin. Merlin was a damn good engine. Yeah. We'll put... We'll put a bunch of them on one bomber, and that'll work. Lancaster worked damn well, you know. Uh, but so you, so they take four six oh fives. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're following along, but instead of attaching each of them to its own propeller, that would be that would be rubbish and them, weak. Yep. They couple them, two of them together, so that two six oh fives are powering. One propeller. One propeller. And, and, you, and, just have this and you make the pitch on the propeller not quite broad enough to be able to cope with that much power anyway. So if the engines are working perfectly, it's producing less power than the two engines would if they were side by side. So even if it works exactly as designed, it's still shitter than having four engines, which is and then, an amazing to thing. to top it off, to top it fucking off, the reason why the engines were set up that way is because they wanted it to dive bomb. Uh, well, Why? Okay, Are you no, serious? No, 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 no really serious. No fucking way. So they went. They, yes. they, they set it up to do. Uh, so originally the plan was, you had Walter Pfeiffer, who was like the guy in charge of Luftwaffe strategic bombing, as it was. Pre Thank God he died. Yeah, he died in an air crash in thirty five. We would have been in deep. Sh we um, would have been in deep yeah. shit if he had. If Wafer had survived, <laughs> you would have seen the equivalent of German Lancasters coming over Coventry, right? But because he didn't, everybody who'd been an army officer, because he was a proper Luftwaffe officer, the rest of them were army officers. He basically said, "Look, we need a strategic bomber," and the rest of them went, "Well, what we need is flying artillery," and that's where Milch and all those other guys came from. So Göring, all those guys, they were all okay. army officers who went, "We Ernst want close air support." Udet, Udet, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and 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 Udet, 
in particular is worth calling out because Udet didn't really know what he was doing. He was a nice boy who was a very brave pilot who had no clue about engineering. And he wound up, after Wafer's dying, he wound up being in charge of all procurement for Luftwaffe. So he tried to develop this HE-177 into a strategic bomber. And when his comrades turned around and said, well, all of our other bombers are close air support craft that can do dive bombing, why can't our 110-foot wings, wingspan plane also dive bomb? And his answer should have been, because we're not fucking insane. Instead, his answer was, I reckon that could be done. So they strengthened the wings, and this is actually it in full dive bomb mode. So that's about as deep as it goes, because that's called a shallow dive bomb. So you go down at about a 20-degree angle, not a, like a 90-degree angle. But if you did that four times, the wings fell off. So what yes. they did is they then strengthened the wings to make them stronger so that you could do more dive bombing, at which point the engines packed up and he crashed into the ground. So they uprated the engines, which made them heavier, which meant that when he went into dive bombing mode, wings fell off. So they then re-uprated the wings and then went, we've made this thing so heavy, we have to put bigger undercarriage on it so that it can land because it's now so fucking heavy, which meant that they had to re-strengthen the wings because if it dive bombed again, the wings would now fall off again. And this cycle went on for basically four years. Uh, and at the end of it all, they went, fuck it, it's too hard, and stopped. Um, yeah, and the, and the thing is, they had to re so, redesign the gear assembly. They couldn't use a traditional gear assembly. So they had to, like, invent this weird hmm. gullwing landing gear design. Where, like, It's really clever. Yeah. It's, uh, why? Why? Said, you could have just bolted so four guess, engines onto guess, a high court or something. I guess, just I guess that that. you could say, I guess you could say, after all of that, it, uh, gave the Nazis uh, a bit of grief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Boxing Day, so we'll continue to be friends. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Don't forget to tip the fish and try the waitress. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? 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 <laughs> um, okay, okay, so I have been umming and eyeing about what to put next. I've got one and... to up after you, so... Okay. Uh, oh, I, There's I a do lot have of one. people in the chat who are completely wrong, who are putting laughing emojis up at that, and frankly, it does not deserve it. Uh, uh, look, look. Right. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm okay. going to cop a lot of flack for this because we clown on it all the time, for good reason. There is much. There is much clowning to be done. I understand, and it didn't achieve anything like it was supposed to, but I'm going to put it in cool mm. because i don't care mm -hmm. Where you, you can die mad oh no mate really the fox bat i you know don't what? i care <laughs> i kind of agree because the fox bat is just fucking cool and it inspired the <laughs> firefox novel it's, it's ludicrous it's absurd and it's ridiculous <laughs> it's amazing i love it. it's just so fast <laughs> it's, it's so, so fast it'll fly itself to death I mean, look, oh. so so uh, I'm going to argue very straight line. I'm going to take this really literally. It cannot sit in Sub-Zero or Cool because when it flew at full chat, it was like, I don't know, I forget what the temperature was, but it was hot enough to make the steel, which it was made from, start to melt. So it was never cool. No, it was even at 35,000, no, 40,000 feet, it was still like 100 no, 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 no. degrees. You're, 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 taking, you're, taking it, you're, you're taking it the complete wrong direction. It could go so fast, it was destroying itself. That's insane. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> that is absolutely metal. Yeah. Yeah, and, so it's okay, the HE-177, and we're not saying that's cool. Okay, okay, but here's the yeah. thing. Here's the thing. Did the HE-177 have a business jet conversion? I think not. What? The actual <laughs> fuck is that? That's pretty neat. I okay, fly. okay, I want one of those. <laughs> Did it have a business jet conversion? No, I don't think so, no, bro. But if it did, I'd it be done for it. A business... <laughs> that oh was real. God. That was, that, as you can see, it's got the Aeroflot marking on the side of it. So actually, they were planning on building a MiG twenty five business jet until someone rightfully pointed out, "What on God's earth would you need a MiG twenty five to do a business jet?" <laughs> that is an actual thing. <laughs> Literally done a cut and shunt, and they've got a Learjet, and they've just shoved it on a MiG twenty five body. Yeah, yeah that's and amazing. The idea was the idea was because the MiG twenty five um, could go almost Mach 3 in space. They figured, hey, it, fuck Concorde. 
this can get our this can get our diplomatic staff and everything to the US for talks on treaties and shit mm. in like two hours. So we're just going to strap them into this bad them... boy and yeet them off. We don't like them anyway. Then we're going to go to the camps. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but also, and also, like when 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 they arrived to uh, start the negotiations, mm. uh, it, like it would make it far more convenient for the American diplomats who were convening with them because they wouldn't have to have translators involved. They could just put everything up on a PowerPoint side because all the uh, Soviet diplomats would be deaf. True. Be yes. Deaf. Yes, they would be true, mm-hmm. and they would also be extremely pleased to be alive. So they're probably that much more amenable to a deal. Um, exactly. Yeah. 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 I like. Okay, and also, and also, if we're talking about indirect, indirect things, right? We're talking about indirect things. You were talking about the grief with its indirect cause of dead fighter pilots. Okay, without the Fox Bat, the F fifteen wouldn't exist. Therefore, Sub Zero. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, wow. Okay. okay, that's quite the fucking flex. Uh, Falcon, please carry on. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, that was, that was excellent. Um, also, I have. Okay. <laughs> I'm going approval. to raise the point that the 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 point raised earlier that yes the <laughs> grief destroyed itself when it was flying but that was just sort of like embarrassing you know like it's it it destroyed itself after four dive bombs because like you're trying to get this bomber this strategic bomber to With the dive wingspan bomb, wider than the B17 stupid. yeah yeah yes the fox bat is just able to go so fucking fast. <laughs> Like you know, it's it's it is, it, it, it is being like it it is going toe to toe with the laws of nature, and whether it's 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 getting the laws of nature to respond, and that is cool. Like they had to build this thing out of steel because, for the same reason, they couldn't afford to make it all out of titanium, which is. To be fair, what they originally planned to do and what the Americans thought they did, it was originally supposed to be built out of titanium. Um, they had to eventually go with steel because price. But yeah. um, the thing is, this aircraft, if they had made the titanium version, it would have been able to go Mark III because it would be light enough and it would also survive the heat and temperatures, it would probably be able to catch up and intercept the SR-71 if they'd actually built this thing out of titanium. Um, it's also just... just you're, you're right, Bin Man. It's just like, there is a distinct difference between I was I was a Frankenstein abortion of a design and I break out and versus Chad Soviet Russia strong man <laughs> who is fucking strapping himself into a rocket ship is like... I am flying aircraft so like fast aircraft. it is melting. It is melting. My <laughs> aircraft is melting. I am Heat going signature, so far. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sure. Over. I hope. Um, the, I'm sure, Anamark, you'll get this reference. It's like that scene at the end of Red Line where the car's going so fast it starts disintegrating. Okay. Okay. So, so wait. So, so, the Tomatsky so, RD100 just gets overhauled. There's a, like a switch inside where if you <laughs> flick the pedal too far forward, it's just like your engine needs to go. Um, what is it? Jester's line from the F-14. I'm Morgan Freeman, and this aircraft is going to a museum this now. Because the moment is you, um, no, look, no, come on. No, okay, so, so Falcon was about to try and suggest an idea before you fools went off on an end. So come on, Falcon. Okay, what would okay. you? We go do the thing. Okay. Now, at face value, this may not seem like the most deadly aircraft in the world. However, it is the only aircraft capable of launching an LGM 30 Minute Man missile out of its ass. <laughs> yes. yeah, wait, 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 wait. The C5! Oh, yes. you suggesting the transport aircraft or Rapid Sub-Zero. Dragon? Come on, which, which are you going for? What was that? Are you going for Rapid Dragon or are you going for the aircraft? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going for the aircraft itself because the okay. aircraft maintains the ability to do this if they so choose to do so. Okay, I mean, all you're doing is strapping <laughs> a parachute to a fucking ICBM and yeeting it out of the boot. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, ch- I, challenge, I challenge the pig to come on, come in here and fight us on the MiG-25. I, I, <laughs> I, I defy you, sir. <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's he, he, great. He's excited about the it. The challenge uh, has been issued. Uh, like half the MiG-31 fleet in, in the war in Ukraine right now are grounded because they've lost five airframes due to engine fires because they keep pushing Jesus. over the, the fucking... Because they're made of, basically, they're made of the energy. same metal that you use to make frying pans. Um, so, mm-hmm. look, I mean, look, come on. The C-5, uh, it's... 
The Starlifter is probably the most amazing logistical machine that has been invented since the horse because of the shit <laughs> it can carry over the distance it can carry it for the efficiency Thanks. it can carry it, right? Yeah. But almost like entire companies of troops like Right. It's cool. Yeah. What's not, not what's not to love? But its ability to carry a Minuteman missile is neither here nor there because it can also carry, you know, whole cities and entire baseball team parks and God knows what else, right? It can carry everything you want to put in the back of it. Yes, and? If you're going to pull the big funny, do you use the C5? I don't think you do. No, but you can. I mean, yes, you can. It's true. It's, 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 it's not on the table. Yeah. I have fantasized. I have fantasized about deploying the Rapid Dragon system out of the C5. The amount of cruise missiles with the Rapid Dragon system that ah, you yeah, could deploy mental. from the C5 is absolutely ridiculous. There's no way. But I would argue, I would argue, Falcon, despite how cool this thing is, I would argue yeah. that the C17 is cooler. Quite frankly. Okay. Just simply because the C-17 has uh, has short field and rough field capability. So this is where you get C-5 into two different not. philosophies of, of airlift, because you have, the C-17 is a tactical airlifter, yeah. whereas the C-5 is a strategic airlifter. It's yeah, just, but like, then you have look, the AN-124, and the AN-124 is bigger I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to say this is a modern horse. It goes there. Because it's really cool, it's also yeah. really boring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's that's fine. I'm not I'm not going to argue with that. In which case, I'm going to I'm going to uh, quickly make an executive decision. I'm going to quickly make an executive decision if we're going there, um, and we're going to have a what we call in the business a rip the homie moment. Oh no! Uh, no because what? rip the homie, rip a real one, RIP a real one. Because if 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 oh, the C five no, man, no, you can't, no, we're, no, we're gonna no. have to put the eight on two two five. We have to have no. it on here, <laughs> but we're having that Whip over in here, peace. Man. That's that's going over there because like it, it, in memoriam, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, like we've um, got to we've got to have the AN two two five here because. It's just the coolest thing also, ever. Like, if, if for no other reason than it was there when the airport outside of Kiev, which the name of which has just escaped my brain because I'm five beers Costamel. in. Costamel. um Wound up not being taken by the Stepsnats. And that, therefore, makes it, by association, the most important moment probably in the last 50 years in European history. Because if they'd taken that airport, probably it was game over, and they didn't. And that aircraft died in the process. 07, respect. But, RIP. Mad respect. I, I am quickly, uh, before I, I get to go on my little uh, 225 rant, because uh, it's, it's a glorious plan. However, they're pussies, because they didn't build the 325. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Dude, the Soviets got absolutely ludicrous with their airplanes. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay, so, so the three two five, as you can see, is a two two five, but even more again. <laughs> but, but, and, but extra. <laughs> and I, I am going to quickly in, inform uh, people here and the audience uh, that Hotol aircraft uh, on on the top there uh, that is being launched into space from the three two five. That is not a soviet concept that's a british one <laughs> yeah, yeah damn right oh yeah, yeah um we just wanted a cheap soviet plane to make it fly because <clears throat> yorkshire engineering um but no, it's cool <laughs> you know yeah you probably uh, so there was there was, there was uh thought there was no it's, it's, it's okay there was a uh, like base, they were floating the idea of a combined Soviet British space program. This is like in nineteen ninety. Yeah. So this is this you know. is long long after the sort of real Cold War had ended. Uh, mm. well, <laughs> Only you know, like, someone it, who's it, it was nowhere near it. 
<laughs> we got a it new was, one it was... now. It's a better one. We're doing Cold War Two right now. It's pretty fucking. Sick. Yeah, no, this, that, that, that's that's true. But like, either way, this is like this is late stage Gorbachev. The Soviet Union is a lot more friendly than it yeah. once was. I mean, it had very, you know, it only had what half a million people in Gulag, so that was the smallest number that it had since the mid twenties, and uh, we thought they could basically be dealt with, and it turned out that they could be until Yeltsin turned up. Um, <laughs> yes. So look, I'm I'm afraid I'm going to remove that because it's a prototype. It has to go. But I will tell you what we'll do. Yes, no, I, I, I have was, an I idea. was just introducing it as as a little aside from the two two five. No, I th- and I think it's a great idea, man. I, I have an idea, which is that at some point in the not too distant future, we should do this thing, but with prototypes, because oh, actually God. there's yes. a whole market of prototypes, right, where we could go with this. And uh, yeah, we should definitely. Do I, this I, yeah, I, I already have a list right now. It I... is my turn. <laughs> Go on. Uh, go, 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 go. And okay, I'm just gonna see. I'm just gonna introduce this and see how things go. Let me talk about Maria. We, uh, Maria, the AN two two five. We can rebuild her. We have the technology. What? Oh God! Oh God! Hang on. Wait. What, uh, what? What's that? Is that the Black Prince Churchill? No, that is a Churchill Mark Seven. Oh, I thought it was a Churchill. So, so, so. Okay, where did? Tell me about the Mark Seven because I know nothing. I mean, bearing in mind, I know nothing about tanks. Okay, so the Mark Seven was the last variant of the Churchill of any real consequence. Uh, up and, Before it, the Centurion up turned up. That, uh, yeah, and, and even then, the Churchill was never like supposed to be a main battle tank. It was sort of like the that was more the job of the Cromwell, and even then, the Cromwell was more of a no, so Centurion vehicle. MTB, which was which which was forty six, wasn't it? Centurion. Uh, so no, Centurion was a uh, forty five. Oh, was it okay? This yeah. is uh-huh. this is yeah. not a this is not a rather splendid Cromwell tank. This is a Churchill tank. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, both of them yes. are beautiful. This... Yes, the Churchill was an infantry tank, and what the concept of that was was that basically British tank doctrine at the time. I am getting most of this from Laserpick, but you know. Uh, we we, we know watching, he does. So if you get it enough. slightly wrong, Ben Man, he will judge you. Just saying in the chat, he will come yes, out and I, he will judge you quite hard. Yeah, he, so get I, it right. I, I, I am I am aware that uh, he he will go back in time and undo the shouting <laughs> me out uh, in uh, in spring, and I will be reduced to zero subscribers. It'll be very sad. Yes. Yeah, um, anyway, I'm just going to erase your channel immediately. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so, as I understand it, you have the cavalry tanks. So. That would be your, your, like, cruiser tanks, your crusaders, and later on the Cromwells, who are very fast and speedy. Uh, They would sort of be behind the infantry tanks. You have these, like, conventional infantry artillery and then big, heavy bunkers on wheels like the Churchill would bust a hole in the front lines. And then you'd have your light, speedy... Uh, agile tanks that would go through that hole and wreak havoc behind enemy lines. Yeah, yeah. It's infantry uh, stuff, right? Big, lots of targets is what I heard there. Carry on. Yes. So the Churchill, it was its job to be an infantry tank and bust the hole. However, this being a British tank and British doctrine, we had some funny ideas about it. So they looked at infantry tank, they saw its role, it's supposed to be with, with infantry. And so, right, so that means it doesn't have to be able to go faster than infantry can walk. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, obviously, so, that makes perfect sense. If it can't outrun the infantry, then it would get away from the infantry if it could. So then it would go the same speed as the infantry. Perfect. No problems. No notes. Carry yes. on. So so this uses uh, a Meadows Flat 12. Actually, pretty cool engine, but uh, nowhere near powerful enough to move especially the Churchill, any faster than about 25 kilometres an hour. I was going to say, didn't, didn't so, a bunch of these use, like, uprated Tempest engines? So the, the Merlin God Mark, fuck knows what, the huge ones, no. but, but just with, no. any, with, with more torque and less no. power. No, you're, 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 think, you're thinking of the Cromwell again. Oh, the Cromwell I, oh, God, used right, okay. a Meteor. The Crom- ah, yeah, that's the Cromwell used the yeah, yeah. Meteor. The Cromwell used the Meteor, and the Meteor was basically a Merlin without the supercharger. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then they got the uprated one, which they put in the comet. 
Yes. And that's sorry, and that's fun the fact, thing I was thinking. Of. It, fact, was the, the, uh, it was the comment I was thinking of, not the censure, and I was talking bullshit. The comment, the comment, and the Cromwell, the comment and the Cromwell both had this thing, which uh, uh, with the meteor, where yes, they had to limit the engine for it because the engine, of course, is designed to be put in Spitfires, so they limited it on the Cromwell and the comet. Uh, the uh, crews would take the restrictor plate off and go speed. Fast boy. Yeah, fast boy, <laughs> briefly. Oh, but, but I mean, good. who cares, right? Yeah, God, okay. Churchill got speed to them. Uh, the church, Churchill didn't get that. It got, well, because also the Meadows Flat 12 was a very old engine, but old meant reliable. So, <clears> anyway. <throat> reliable uh, crossed with British design, so not very, but uh, people yes, knew how to but, fix it. So, it's different. So this especially proves a problem once you get to the Mark 7 variant, because the Mark 7 had i'm it, it it was the heaviest variant because it had the most armor the Good. frontal armor frontal armor on this thing was 152 millimeters thick jesus christ it's thicker that's than a tiger thick. that's insane it's thicker than a tiger. That's this is pretty fucking thick. This, like the, the the frontal the frontal plate on a tiger 1 was only like a little over 100 millimeters if i'm right so this is I've just got to, sorry, I've got to this, check, because this doesn't look like it's got any rivet marks on it either, whereas, like, quite a few of them did, which made them ridiculously vulnerable to spalling. But that looks like it's actually been cast. Is that is that the illustration, yes, or is these, that real? Th these, these the the later turrets on the Mark Seven were indeed... Uh, no, no, even the Churchill Mark One had a cast turret. But it had um, a bunch of rivet marks on it, which caused problems. And, and I notice also, which might be a little clue for all T seven T seventy two designers out there for thinking about what might come after the T fourteen. Do you notice above the tracks there? There's this little hatch. Um, that's so that the crew doesn't have to die inside the tank. Um, just throwing it out there, yes. right? Yeah. No. Um, and speaking of uh, and blow not panels dying on the inside yeah. the tank. Speaking of not dying inside the tank, the Churchill's main claim to fame and probably its biggest cool factor most survivable tank of the entire war yeah yeah yeah. because you could actually get out of the motherfucking thing i mean that's yeah. what do they have spring kits on the hatches and stuff too or <laughs> uh, i don't believe so i think mainly just because especially the later variants had armor so thick that they could actually <laughs> take some hits so i'm well, not uh, really I'm not, cool I'm not... about this is it has uh this old the old engine that's put in that thing and combined with the tracks and the suspension system it's got this thing has the when basically the Churchill uh, talk. Yes. Um, yes, you can you can literally climb trenches and shit at like a sixty degree angle in this tank. It's actually yes. wild. You're not gonna go. You're not gonna, like, yeah, you're not gonna wind up all, with, all the way up. <laughs> you're not gonna overtake yes. anything, but you're gonna go through everything. Um, and that's you know it's a philosophy. Also. On the back of the, the armor bin at the back of the turret there, it had blowout panels like early ones. It didn't always work, but it was a nice idea and it was a good start. So that also really helped because clearly what do you aim for is the bit you can see sticking out. You can see the turret sticking out, so that's the bit you shoot at. And, you know, if, if that doesn't go boom immediately, good signs. Everybody's probably going to be able to get out before it does. And it had a dirty great big flash dispenser on the front, which was really helpful to just hide signature. Yes. Well, not so the, the 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 Churchill is a funny tank because it there are a lot of aspects of it that were quite good and modern. I think it was either the first or second tank ever that could neutral steer, as well. Um, earlier variants of the Churchill, the Mark Seven was much later. I'm uh, going to say but, I'm going I'm going I'm going to go NATO standard slash Sub Zero. The only reason it's not Sub Zero is because ultimately. It's, it, it was very limited in design through doctrine. Yeah. The doctrine of this, it, like, yeah, the Mark Seven in particular was like still using the same engine as the Mark One, but was however many tons heavier because of 152 millimeter thick armor. So it just like <laughs> it. I think the top speed was reduced to something like 20 kilometers an hour. Yeah. It was. I'm gonna put this on screen for everyone Painfully here just look at oh look at that look at that look at it that just, fuck it can climb straight vertical it's so good lord yeah, yeah. It's wild absolutely wild and you can actually see the top of the armor bin on the back there which is kind of cool uh yeah so it's, yeah it's very neat yes um so yeah no um no, again you. it's yeah. just it's it's 
it goes to show that like Brits could actually design something very good if they weren't told to design something weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, guys, I, I need to quickly pop to the little boys' room and then fairly shortly I'm going to have to disappear. So I'd like you to just give a moment uh, to think about... We've We've said no battleships, no prototypes, but what if we opened it up to battleships and prototypes? If you had one pick each or another random vehicle what would it be and okay. what are you going to stick in All right. so you've got one you've only got one and i noticed for example there's been a lot of shouting in the chat here about the vark uh no one's touched the vark no one's touched the hellcat that was asked for earlier on uh no one's touched the zero probably just as well uh there's been a few other asks out there as well around things like the abrams um you can pick one more thing what are you going to pick? You've got mm. five minutes and talk shit in the interim because I need to go for pee. I oh. know exactly what I'm picking. I know exactly what I'm picking. I'm debating. I'm debating. I am having. I'm, I'm having debating. Debate. <laughs> I'm oh, debating because I, I don't know what I'm going to pick. I don't know what I'm going to pick. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Oh, but I could. But, oh. <laughs> Now you know what I know. I'm I'm going to change it up because I've already ranted about that on another podcast. Um, no. Oh Damn, fuck off! I hate web p files so much. They're dog shit. Oh, <laughs> the bane of my fucking existence. Oh, that's a nice picture. Oh, that'll go well if I like use it as like you know a little thing to demonstrate what I'm talking about in my YouTube video. I go to oh, it's a web p. I have to convert it and go out of my fucking way. Ugh. This is oh, going what? in this. This is a sub zero. This is a sub zero pick, and I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, I I I'm sort of like putting my heart on the line a little bit with this one yeah uh, me too people are going to yell at me for this but i don't care people are going to yell at me they're going to call me a fanboy i've got big plans right now that i can't tell you about because the haters are going to sabotage me yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm very happy i've introduced you to that saying <laughs> <laughs> it, it was very useful but i have <laughs> What have we got, lads? I was, I was, I was debating because I was thinking, do I go to Sylvansky IS? But I've already got a, a whole hour long shit, shit fest on that airplane and that I've got somebody's, planned. So. Somebody's thrown out their SR seventy one. Hard to fucking argue with, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, well, like, well, well, the thing right is, if we were going to do this a hundred percent properly, we'd have all the main ones. We'd have a much bigger. We'd have a much bigger wall. And we'd have all the main ones in their various spots preset, like they did on the show, because, you know, the Vulcan and the SR-71 are going to be in Sub-Zero. They just are. There's, there's, there's no debate there's just, about no, that. No, there's no around it. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, the Vark is like... going to be cool, at least, if not Sub-Zero, but, you know, poisoning your own ground crew does sort of does, dampen it. It puts a dampener on it, doesn't it? I mean, you can't say that it's that it's completely okay when it does that kind of shit to your ground crew. Ooh, the Gloucester Javelin. Now there's a name. Uh -huh, uh -huh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I do like the Javelin. It's a bit dumb, but... <laughs> neat. If neat. you guys think we're going to put the SU-57 on this, on this fucking thing, if you think we're going to disgrace this thing... <laughs> With that piece of trash, it's not you even going. You're having story. another it fucking so thing coming, sunshine. Drunk. It's like, actually, you know what? That's right. It embodies it's everything about stealth, it. It is the stealthiest it's ever been because it's so far into Russia strong, you can't actually see it. Yeah, <laughs> it is gone. Oh uh, man, um, yeah, I have to the say, X okay, so, so look, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to pick one because, and I know it's in theme, right? So I apologize because I'd like to do something different. But at the same time, it's sort of what I know and be kind of wrong not to do this. So uh, bear with me a moment. I, I'm going to pick for my prototype, for my one pick for this particular go through, and there are others in the future, is this. 
So for those that aren't familiar, this is the Martin Baker uh, fighter, oh. basically. So this is... Oh, oh, is this the... Yes, no, it's oh. the MB5. It's the MB5. Oh, the MB5 is a, is a very good plane. This is a contra-rotating oh, two-engine single-seat fighter that had they managed to get it to work when they put it into the production... Well, they actually did put it into production briefly, but it only made five units. 1941, motherfuckers. This thing was faster than a Mustang by a country mile. And a altitude would have kicked its ass but it was complicated to fly it was difficult and all the rest of it it had four forward facing 50 cal cannon uh not uh sorry not 50 cal four forward facing cannon and a 50 cal on each wing so it should have destroyed whatever was in front of it but again actually that meant ammunition was a problem there were issues with it but jesus if they'd had this and martin baker hadn't been killed when he was developing it <clears throat> And it went. I, God, I, 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 um, I think I watched. A, was it a Rex's hangar video on this? I think he has one. Uh, yeah, and and if he has, watch it because I mean Rex does great research, right? So to yeah. me, it's um, right there because it didn't quite fly. Yeah. The uh, if I remember rightly from the video, uh, once it had been refined a little bit, they just uh, they they kept testing it until. Yeah. Like the late 40s, like 1947, 1948. And from what I can tell, simply because everyone wanted to fly it because it was such a good plane to fly, you know? Like, a lot of the test pilots said, like, it's one of the best planes I've ever flown. It's fantastic. It was that niche. It was that weather bit where um, jets were coming in and it wasn't good enough to be a jet. It just wasn't. It wasn't. Um, yeah. And it was too complicated to go into the beginning of World War Two, And... Martin Baker lost interest in the project halfway through and then died uh, actually flying it. And that killed it. And, like, with so many aviation projects, you're quite close to greatness. This was close to greatness, but it was not great. You you can't argue that it was the right machine for the right moment because it wasn't, but kind of cool nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Reasonable. Yeah, no, I'm, I I don't really think I, uh, I'm going to argue with that. Okay. I think that's good. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I'm still uh, busy cropping out mine. Uh, okay. Does anyone want to go next? <laughs> uh, I've got one. Um, okay, if we're doing prototypes, you, you take a 747 and you stick a laser on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, baby. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby! Yeah, one. Ah, it's so cool. It's so I'm ridiculous. Say that's ice cold, man. Like that is uh... that, that goes right over here. I think the that's only pro- <laughs> the only problem with it was, and I, and I, and I, hate, I, I whisper this to an American, it it didn't work. I, mean, I don't it, care. It, I don't it, care. But it, it, it didn't work like at all. It's really cool as an idea. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason that they didn't make them though. Uh, well, it, it also drew a lot of power. And yeah, 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 yeah. And it, I was it, going to say yeah. how how much how what was the power source for it uh, even? Yo, that's a really good question. Off off the cuff, I'd have to look that up one second. Um, God, I can't remember now. I remember I remember it being developed, and I remember oh. going, "That's gonna be amazing." And then they went, "Yeah," but it sort of turned itself off midair. Uh, yeah, um, I'm a chemically, but so somebody in chat saying it's it's a chemical laser. Yeah, I think that is right. Uh, so that would give it a, a limited, like one or two shots, and then you're done. It was a megawatt class chemical oxygen iodine laser. Yeah, yeah. Wikipedia says and... a fucking megawatt. Piss off! Oh god, <laughs> megawatt <laughs> class. So there could be multiple. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fiery. As cool as as cool as this is, I'm going to need to remove the Rapucha class landing ship blowing up to make room because I... there's another Sub Zero coming. Okay. 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 Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of not okay with that, but but you carry on. <laughs> Let, let's make the let, I'll tell you what let's make the fucking st- stupid aircraft carrier not an aircraft carrier thing flying willy thing hang on wait not that let's make the flying we'll make, smaller we'll make yeah. the Strids wagon here we'll put I love the Strids wagon I'm a big fan of the Strids wagon but she can go up over there then my man here can go here and we can do a better job because hang on two shakes of a lambs diddly 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 where's my button there's my button 
And what we will do is we get the important bit out of that picture, which is that lovely. And then she can go there. There we go. You have space, my friend. Carry on. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. Now I am going out here. I'm also going into sub zero. I have not one, but two entries. And I'm cheating a little bit because you are, you are completely fucking cheating, but fine. I'm, I'm, I'm entering two entries for the cool factor. So okay. first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my actual prototype, my actual prototype submission uh -huh. is uh -huh. this. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I present to you the so the Caspian Sea Monster, the Soviet Ekranoplast. Yes. Ekranoplast. Yeah, absolute <laughs> peak. Um, actually, Sub that's zero. not the Caspian Sea Monster, that's the Lund Clash. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible i just, love my donkey this my is beautiful like, donkey carry on it's it just it's just peak like mm. you know it's like peak art deco soviet cold war design you know it's like that it's like that meme that went around at the time you know um, this is a Soviet turbojet train. I'm sorry, the fucking what? <laughs> right? Like, uh, hey, can we make an amphibious landing ship that shoots anti-ship missiles that's also an amphibious, like, yeah, that can, so, it goes the speed of a wave will can... kill the first division of the Russian Soviet <laughs> airborne. Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. My, my absolute, my absolute favorite thing about um, the, uh, the Caspian Sea Monster, like the big fuck-off transport one, was that because uh, the Soviet Union didn't invent uh, microcircuits until fucking whenever they did in the 80s or the something. Valve technology is fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, the Caspian Sea Monster, it was like... It, it, it was like... When when a dog owner tells tells you like oh he likes to bite but he's he's lovely he's, oh, he's a big loving softy. really and then, yeah and you see him with you puppies he's it great and it rips your arm off. Uh, I have yeah. a space especially prepared for this puppy which is over here my friend because it didn't work a slight wave could kill it it looks as fugly as okay, anything that's ever no, flown ever no and what are you I'm talking <laughs> about i'm afraid are you, you serious? put now look is it is it cooler or less cool than a fairy gannet and the answer is quite clearly less cool than a fairy gannet so I, okay go. i'm sorry no no, <laughs> sorry. no 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 i i'm revolting i am i am <laughs> starting no. i am starting a revolution this is not no i no. will i will chat, i will agree chat. No, chat, come on. Come on. I will, uh, all I, I can, will, see, is, I can uh, see the capital letter says, yes, put it there. See, done. Sold. Uh. Yeah, Crowder <laughs> plans a, a peak steampunk. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I, I, will, I will put forward that, yes, the reason they didn't go ahead with the Lun class is because the Lun was designed to operate over open waters, which you can't always guarantee will, be, will have waves of less than 10 feet. Hmm. Ever. However... Mm -hmm, uh -huh. However, uh -huh, uh -huh. it has big fuck off anti ship missiles and is like a <sighs> jet that spins across the water, and that's cool as fuck. I mean, you do make you make a you make you make a cogent and fair point. I I feel bad though about putting it anywhere near NATO because, with the greatest respect to NATO, it's not a thing that they would ever try. Uh, yeah, we had way cooler hydrofoils and shit. I think it shits. It shits. Well, perfect. Uh, I misspoke, but that's ideal. I think it shits in uh, in, in shortly Soviet because uh, kind of is. Um, <sighs> it's no it's just thing only to NATO. NATO. I will accept it, <laughs> but I don't have to fucking like it. I don't fucking but like it. It has. <laughs> it does have. It does make room for the ultimate win. Mm -hmm. This is the ultimate sub zero. <laughs> No one can argue. Uh -huh. We talked about it before. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> the recoilless rifle Vespa uh, is sub zero. It's sub zero. And yes, that's going right yes, there. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I'm yes. Going absolutely. To, sorry. I'm, going, I'm going to go on my little poodle around Naples selling <laughs> little like buns that I have baked with my beautiful wife. Who and I'm going to take is, like, from the Sicily. Panther. <laughs> and and like you know, I'm doing all of this, and then when uh, the guy from from the mob comes and asks me for protection money, <laughs> I am blasting his Alfa Romeo to high heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's I, right. 100%. I think 
I think you found a way, and I think it's a very neat way of closing the whole thing out there. I think that's a beautiful decision and absolutely yes. the right way. Hey, hey, I still got to do mine. And I think oh, yeah. Falcons as well. Oh, no, no, I, I, uh, I did one. Falcons got the laser. Oh, wait. Now, Falcons got the laser. Oh, yes, so that course, just, course, that's, that's, that yes, just leaves. That no, it's, just one more. it's the People's one Soviet of Yorkshire there. is the final one. Go on. Yes. Okay. Now, I was introduced to this vehicle. When I was but a wee lad of like twelve or thirteen or something, this like, is that's back ago, when I that's back when I was like ago, I right? only cared I only cared about like cars. I I wasn't into military stuff at all. I was like this is cars are my thing, and they still are. But uh, I was introduced to this vehicle, and I think, and I thought, wow. Tanks can be awesome. Now, as such, the vehicle that made me think that might be a bit of an indictment against me as a person. Are you? So I'm going to leave it. It's not the T34. Good. So I'm going to drop it in. I will let you guys judge. Uh, this is a vehicle that goes by many names. To some it is the T-28, to others it is the T-95, but to me, it will, will always be the Doom Turtle. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, I know what you're yes. talking about. Oh, baby. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. <laughs> this blows. I love okay. it. Okay, we can't get we can't put it on screen because it the, it will get the stream demonetized and killed by Katakawa. It will descend like the hammer of God. But it's going in Sub Zero because of that scene in Girls on Panzer. If you know, you know. Fuck it's also, going right there. Also, it's it going has right there. Two sets of tracks and one giant gun, which it could never really point. It was supposed to be nuclear proof and wasn't. And it was supposed to be built in the tens of thousands, but was much too mechanically complicated for the Soviet Union to turn out. So I think it sits in sub zero because it probably contributed more than anything else we put up on this screen towards the end of the Cold War, but not the way that the no, Russians that's, built it that's, not, that's not the Russian one. This is American. This is an American, American one. Oh, that's the American one. Holy shit! Yeah, okay, man. it's not. It's not object. Whatever it is. Uh, no, no, that's not object two seven nine. Okay. No. Well, I tell you what, guys. I'm going to have Why to go, which is down. really, really boring. So, uh, you cracker, I'm going to leave this so running fit, uh, and turn everything else off, Philip. and I will catch you later. Have a good one, Philip. Uh, has uh, just uh, reminded uh, reminded me of a very good meme. Just if we can. Just have the T28, just focus on that. What the fuck is a kilometer? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, the stream's still going, hopefully. So if the stream is still going, what we need is we need to we need to do something. I feel like we've got one blank space left. We've got two blank spaces left. There's one in Russia Strunk, which is absolutely god awful. And I think I think I know what to put there. I've got one more for submission. Is it a sub zero? Uh, it, it is absolutely a sub zero. Okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're starting to run out of space. Um, We're going to put it up. We're going to have me. to do yeah, some yeah, it's going up. It, jiggling around. It is a P38. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. All right. The P38 can <laughs> opener. So this stream, if you look in the description, says kit. A soldier's kit is nothing without a can opener. If you are in a military that does not have, like, modern MREs. Oh my god, it's a Fred! It's a Fred! Oh! It's a fucking ridiculous eating device! It's a Fred! Okay, so it's not an actual Fred, but, like, that's not a vehicle. It doesn't have to be a vehicle. Look at the description. It says... Uh, through scientific principle, military kit from Sub Zero, the seriously Russian. Oh, okay. you do you and your technicalities. Yep. That, okay. And that is In the which most case, important it has to, thing. It, it has to be the scale then, because we're gonna have to put it. Put it in that. Put it in the hand of the guy in the Stridswagen. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. In which case, we need to put something in near the fairy gannet, and I think I know what to put there. And I know that we're not going to get many arguments on that. Hold on. 
Where is it? Where is it? Some people are going to hate me for this. But I'm going to put it here because I hate this thing. Everyone hates this thing. All my homies hate this thing. And if you have any sense, it represents one of the worst aeroplanes ever built. And I will fucking die on this hill. That goes near the fairy gannet. This goes near the fairy gannet. This oh, goes so right here. Oh. That, my friends, is the lag three. And I hate the lag three. The lag three is an atrocity against aviation. God, it looks like a P fifty one. I will not allow it because I really need to pee. <laughs> yeah, what? What? Ugh. Yeah, it looks like it. Kind of looks like. Um. Oh, what's the one I'm thinking of? The, the top. No, oh, we were right oh, back, guys. I need to go to the bathroom. It... Sure. Right, have a good one. Is it the? What were the American fighters before the before the Mustang came around? Oh, the P forties. Yes, yes. Doesn't it? it Am does I imagining vaguely, that? Like the tail looks like a P forty tail that's kind of like squished. And then you've got the P fifty one B cockpit, and then you've got like what looks kind of vaguely Spitfire-ish for the nose. I was going to say, yeah. It's like an amalgamation of all of the best designs put together in the worst way. Yeah, no, hang on, okay. Well, I'm guessing the Lag 3 had the, like, ever-present engine that, the, yes, it's got the Klimov 105. Okay. Which is the, like, vaguely, like, pardon me. The Klimov was, I believe, uh, yes, it was just a Soviet-license-produced hispano Suiza engine. Interesting. And, but, like... I mean, it, it was yeah, the Hispano Suiza okay. so. <laughs> Yeah, the the Hispano Suiza engine. It was like good. It needed developing a bit more, I think, to like really make it like, yeah. But yeah, I, I the only interesting thing I ever really heard being done with the M one hundred five engine was, uh, the fins. Had a bunch of Moran Solnia uh, MS four hundred sixes that they bought from France before France was, you know, no scoped by the Nazis, <laughs> um, and so and the MS four hundred six used an earlier version of the Hispano Suiza twelve Y, which is what the Klimov M one hundred five is a licensed produced copy of. Okay, and so they had a bunch of these MS four hundred sixes, and what would happen is every time they'd shoot down. Um, a Soviet plane like a Lag 3 or a Yak that used the Klimov, they go send out search parties to find the wreck, nick the engine from it, and then put that in their Moran Solnias. To because oh uh, Klimov was because the Klimov was like slightly more upgraded and made a little bit more power, so it would make their Moran Solnias better. <laughs> yeah, still doesn't change the fact that the Lag is a heap of shit. Well, you know that's that's the point. I'm saying that the most use that the lag that the lag ever had was that the, every time the Finns shot them down, they'd send out search parties to find the wreck, pick up the engine, and then retrofit it into their uh, Moran Solnias. Oh, God damn, dude! The things wrong with that again. I have an entire page in my history of Soviet aviation just dedicated to shitting on this thing. There is just so much wrong with it. Everything so we, is wrong. We were discussing, it looks like a weird amalgam of, like, Spitfire and P-40 and, like, what, what, P51, what? P-51 I, B cockpit. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very well acquainted. I would uh, enjoy a quick rant, though, very much. Okay, okay, so, basically, the story of the Lag 3 is thus. When, um... So Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union were, quite frankly, there's no other way of putting it, they were economic and technological allies and had been since the 1920s, before Nazi Germany was Nazi Germany. Fun fact, the uh, Soviet Weapons of Mass Destruction Program was set up by the Germans in the 1920s. Yes. Which is fun. 
Anyway, point is, they got a bunch of examples of like German aircraft which they uh, purchased uh, in exchange for you know raw materials and stuff that the Germans were going to use to rearm, right? And with this, they sent their I-16s and I-15s off into the Spanish Civil War to fight against the Germans and the Italians, and also sent their I-16s and I-15s to fight against the Japanese. And they discovered that the Japanese had just released the Ki-43, and that the uh, <laughs> the Germans had just released the Bf-109, and found out that their little I-16s were getting absolutely murdered. And so, they needed to build new monoplane fighters. So, the start off, the Sylvansky IS, which is a tale of woe into itself, the worst aeroplane ever built, I think, if you can call it a plane, and I use that term very loosely. That project crashed and burned. Then you have Polykarpov's design, the I-180. That had a lot of potential, but it was basically because of the limitations of technology and what they had available. It, basically, what Polykarpov built was a super I-16, and so it had all the same problems. And so it was quick to spin, hard to control, and it ended up... They, uh, he basically warned the Soviet government, hey, we can't uh, get this thing done on time. It's going to be a good plane. It's just it's going to be too rushed if you force it through. But they're like, no, we need monoplane now to crush fascist run tests and so they ran tests on that and two of the Soviet Union's greatest test pilots, the most famous one being Chalkov, uh, died testing the I-180 and so Polikarpov was disgraced and sent to Germany on a fact-finding mission, which like with Tukhachevsky is usually a precursor to getting uh, the old uh, traitor to the motherland treatment, but he was lucky and ended up working for some guy called Artyom Mikoyan, founded some place with that other guy, Gerovich Mig, I think they called it. Anyway, Never heard moving on. Moving on. Uh, the the failure of the radial designs between the Sylvansky and the Project I-180 meant that they needed to develop new aircraft, and so they developed the inline engine aircraft to compete with the 109, which used the Klimov VK-105. Anyway, with the 105, they had a problem. They're like, okay, we need to build a fighter. So there were two people competing. There was Yakovlev, and there was Lag. MiG was also building something using the Stamovix engine, the Mikulin AM-35, but the two main contenders were Lavoshkin, Gurevich, and Yakovlev. The problem they had was... Um, the Soviets couldn't build out of aluminium. The reason is they didn't have enough aluminium to go around. They didn't have the technology to refine and produce a lot of it. So aluminium was expensive. Without aluminium, they couldn't build metal-skinned aircraft in any large number. But the problem is, Soviet airfields, guess what? Most of them don't have hangars or runways. So, you need to find a way to have an aircraft that can sit in the open air in one of the wettest and most humid climates in the world, depending on whether it's winter or, or summer, um, without rotting away and without breaking. So, Yakovlev made a smart decision. He decided, fuck it. I'll build the important bits of my aircraft out of steel tubing and then use that as the frame and then I'll do the rest with wooden fabric, and we can just swap bits out. We can make it cheap and cheerful. We'll swap bits out when they break. Right? And that's a smart decision. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lag was like, that sounds like a lot of fuck around. What if, what if, just hear me out, we can prevent the wood from rotting and use that instead? Um... Well, how do we do that? Well, there was only one way to do that. You would need to create a wood laminate. And so the lag was built out of Bakelite. Oh, no. Absolutely mm. not. 
Okay, so not a technically bakelite, rather it was delta wood, which is Russian pine treated with phenylformaldehyde resin, which is what they used to make bakelite. Gotcha. But basically bakelite. And so they're like, hey. Now this was genius. It gives you structural rigidity, it gives you it gives you strength, it gives you the ability to not have to worry about, you know, putting it in hangers or anything like that. It won't rot away. It is a perfectly good design problem heavy very very heavy pine is, the not a, pine is not a word known for its lightness I yep, so, and so um with this new design they're like okay but with the vk105 as you pointed out that the uh, fins used to steal them because they had a lot of power they thought, hey, we can make this work. And it did. It wasn't as fast as the Yak or the MiG or the MiG one, later to become the MiG three. But if you close the radiators and put it in a shallow dive, this thing could get up to really decent speeds. Problem. Mm. That was the prototype. Mm. Uh, then they no, rig just, then just... they rigged it for combat. Yes, I, this is going to be. I was going to say this is going to be one of those, an, yet another Soviet thing where it's like, kind of actually decent or okay in the design phase, and then they start producing it in on mass. Yeah, and I'm sure the quality of the um, bakelite wood was never up to the proper specifications that it should have been. No, because they had to completely retrain the workforce from scratch to use all these things, and the treatment methods they were using meant there was a lot of chemicals that gave people, like, you know, skin melting conditions, etc. Um, mm. So, not very good. Uh, build quality of the lag was absolutely awful, uh, because they had to train a new workforce from scratch. Soviet build quality in general at this period is absolutely god-awful anyway. Quality control is non-existent. And after the Germans invaded, they had to move the entire factory to the Urals and restart production from scratch with no resources. So production lags initially were awful, but even during their adoption phase, the lag was a disaster. When they actually rigged it for combat with weapons and ammo and fuel and the radio and all their gauges, the aircraft was now almost a third heavier than when the prototype was tested. Oh. And when and when combined with the Bakelite construction, uh, it was the slowest. It was almost fifty to sixty miles an hour slower than a BF one hundred nine. Had the low, had the slowest climb rate of any World War Two fighter, uh, of any monoplane fighter in service at the time. Uh, its turning ability was so bad it was just don't bother. Um, and. There are a bunch of other issues. The treatment they use on the canopy, you know how like you have anti-reflective uh, treatments for the canopy, like you uh, peroxide it, you know, to make sure you don't get so you can see out the yeah. canopy. Uh, the yeah. treatment that was done on the plexiglass for the lag was done incorrectly, so it would actually like capture the light instead of refract it, meaning that most lag pilots uh, were forced to fly with their cockpits open because they couldn't see out if the if the cockpit was closed because um, the light would sort of reflect off the cockpit and blind you so you couldn't see out. Um, uh, they also, as you can imagine, the older Soviet uh, build quality on fuel lines and oil lines wasn't exactly great. And uh, when they ran it, no one had thought to include an exhaust or venting system that uh, seals the pilot's compartment from that. And so they flew with the canopy open anyway because exhaust gases would flood directly into the cockpit, uh, boiling the pilot alive if you kept the canopy closed. Um, and then, of course, you have the other issues of the absolutely woeful performance. Uh, basically... The Soviets ended up give, the Soviet pilots ended up giving it the nickname the guaranteed varnished coffin, which was nice, I guess. And the fun part was 
all of you wonderful people in the chat, do you remember Mr. Laserpig's video on the T-34? You all remember I mean, it. You do. guys remember yeah, it, don't I remember you? it, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good rewatch every now and then, actually. Yeah. Do you remember how he talks about armor casting? And the uh, and the heat treating and process. yeah. Tell me, dear viewers, how does one strengthen an otherwise not strong piece of uh, material? You treat it oh, you... with heat, or in the case of wood, resin, which increases the strength and rigidity. However, it has a side effect. More rigid. More rigid is good. More brittle. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so you see, with normal, wood, with normal wood and normal fabric, when you hit it with a machine gun bullet or you hit it with a cannon round, yes, it may scorch and may catch fire of its fabric, but most of the time, the bullets will go through and you'll be going fast enough that the flames are snuffed out. Be fine. The problem is, when you have that Bakelite shell which is chemically treated and then tre heat treated and laminated and all that good stuff. Um, the Germans had this wonderful little thing called the Minengeschoss round, which is basically as much high explosives as you can fit into a cannon shell as physically possible. Okay. W tell me, dear viewer, if you cast your mind back to the T-34 video, um, what happens when a lot of armor piercing and high explosives hits a very rigid surface? <laughs> It's like freezing something and hitting it with a shovel. Yes. Yeah. When German 20mm meaning the shots rounds would hit the fuse the, the fiberglass of the fucking um the delta wood fuselage, it would shatter the aircraft. It would actually blast the aircraft apart. It would blast control surfaces off. It would shatter the fuselage. Um because instead of going straight through, it would explode on contact with the rigid surface and because it was so tightly rigid wound up it would shatter the airframe and Damn. yeah in short the lag is the worst the worst thing it took lavoshkin 2 years to get the production process straightened out, to get new materials available, to get all that, and then get a motor powerful enough. It's ironic, because the Lag 3 is the worst aeroplane I can think of. When people tell me, think of the shittiest plane you can think of, I think of a Lag, and yet it would become the basis for the Soviet's best fighter of World War II, which is the LA-5, later the LA-7. So the Lag did come good in the end, but it basically took a complete rework of the entire thing. But God. God. I hate that. Uh, well, everything that no Soviet aviation design. On on that on that note, yes, quite. I do have to dip out. Um I had do a Do we have a complete guys. list? I think we have I a think, complete list. I think we're good. We've got a pretty good board going. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll have to do this again, definitely with the uh, with purely prototypes. Yes, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Because I've I've got a, I've got a lot of weird shit lined up for that. <laughs> oh yes, we all have. Anyway, I think I'm going to go to bed, guys. Yeah, Hello, everybody. Really thank you for all tuning in, chat. <laughs> Um, Indeed, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh boy! Oh, oh, oh boy! Yep. All right, guys. Later. Unceremonious ending, but we will see y'all on the flippity side. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.